And welcome to the Round 11 Clash here at South Oval, uh, down at Curtin University, home of the Curtin Uni Wesley side, the uh, undefeated juggernaut in this A-grade Perth Footy League season. My name is Ward Harris, once again joined by Mark Winnett. How are you today, mate? Very good, Ward. Yourself? Mate, doing all right, doing all right. Uh, backing up a second day, we uh, had the pleasure of calling the uh, Perth Footy League against the WA Country uh, women's game last night, actually out at Inglewood Oval. Um, looked really tight co uh, contest there. Uh, Perth Footy League ended up just getting the uh, the chocolates in the end, one by two points. Um, Funny game, actually. Two goals, 17 was the final score to four goals, three. So, look, plenty of opportunity for the Perth Footy League girls to absolutely blow it apart. But, look, atmosphere was really, really great. And, um, yeah, look, it was a, was a good opportunity to get down there and see some women's footy. Um, but, look, back to the contest that we've got today. Look, probably match of the round, mate. First versus fourth. Um, and, look, I, I think we're set up for a cracker. Yeah, really, I'm up and about today. I'm really looking forward to this contest. Magnificent weather. A beautiful day for football, too. Really good sides. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, really looking forward again to seeing Curtin Uni, the juggernaut, 10-0. and zero. Uh, Really going well again this year, and obviously Fremantle CBC are uh, dangerous and uh, capable of beating anyone on their day. So it um, should be a really good game, Ward. Oh, I think it will, and look, these teams, they've already played once this year. We're starting to get to that time of the year where um, the teams are going back and playing each other. And look, uh, CBC, they actually gave Curtin their biggest test so far. They, uh, they only lost the game... I think in round two by 16 points. Um, it was a pretty even contest and um, look, probably the difference that day was uh, Corey uh, Delolio who ended up kicking three, not playing today. One of the big outs and I think there's another one out as well if I remember right. Yeah, well, my uh, love child, Cage Stewart's not in today. Every time I see him, I just love watching Cage Stewart play but, uh, you know, dynamic midfielder in the Perth Football League. He'd be right up there in the fairest and best I would have thought for the association. He's he's out today as is uh, Corey Delolio as you mentioned and no Brent Latch either and no Jared Parry. So some notable outs for Curtin Uni uh, and for CBC. Uh, no David Roach, has been a really important player for them. Just a sore shoulder at this moment. And Coach Liam Anthony uh, didn't pick himself in the league side this week. So, um, so yeah, look, obviously that probably means they're taking this game really seriously. Mm -hmm. CBC picking their fittest and best side. And um, I'm going to tip them today, Ward. I think there's an upset coming. Mate, I, uh, I like it, and uh, look, uh, I think, yeah, very brave of you. It's always interesting tipping a, against a team that's uh, 10 and zip with a percentage of 286%, but look, good luck to you. Um, I have to admit I picked Curtin Uni um, when we did the bet Between the Posts uh, show the other day, and look, I'll uh, have to stick with it, but I, I think we're end up with a, a really, really tight contest today. Is look, both teams start to roll out onto the ground, CBC out there first, um, look, just going through last week's games, actually, Curtin Uni, they end up playing West Coast last week, convincing win there, won by 42 points with Buick Corner and, and Hunter um, kicking two apiece, so just a nice even spread of goal scorers. CBC, though, lost to University for the second time this year, and look, uh, I came in today thinking, look, that might be a bit of a wake-up call for them, um, that they really need to kind of kick along if they, they want to make sure they're there around the pointy end of the year. Yeah, five goals, 13 last week, so they had their opportunities, obviously didn't take them, conditions, remember, Last week it was pretty windy out at Scarborough, so it would have been the same down at CBC. But University, always a bogey side thereabouts for, for this competition. But just got a feeling today that I know CBC broke North Beach's duckling it was last year. They're just one of those sides. If they put it all together on the day, they're a momentum sort of a team. They've got the t people in their side, like the George Hampsons, uh, who on his own we know what George is mm -hmm. capable of. So, you know, Jack Perham down forward. Um, you know, it's dangerous players down there for CBC. And then, look, I love the Curtin Uni Wesley side. It's taken me a lot to tip against them. But I'm thinking at some point this year they're going to drop a game and today might be the one board. But um, happy to be proven wrong. Looking forward to watching them play again. Absolutely right. As uh, Curtin Uni out there in their uh, pink jumpers today, I think it's the... Um I'm trying to think what is the, the big day that they've got today. It looks like a ladies' day with a uh, like a pink ribbon kind of theme or something like that, but yeah. it's it's all happening over there with a the Four Pines Brewing Company, and, it, mate, it looks about 700 deep in there at the moment, mate. So uh, I'll tell you what, if we weren't here, it'd be a uh, bit of fun over there this afternoon. Absolutely. I think it was Pink Tiger Lady Day Ward. Pink all the Tiger ladies, Lady? Yeah, they were coming in dressed up like they're going to the Melbourne Cup today, and there's also a tent next to them, about 100 blokes. We well, can't wait to probably cross over, I don't think, but um, really good for Perth Footy League to have this sort of... 
uh, you know, activations on game day and said all the ladies are really dressed up for this one. They'll be looking forward to it and uh, champagne will be flowing freely over there. We might hear a bit of screeching later on, Ward, as their husbands and boyfriends go near the footy, but adds a bit of momentum and atmosphere to the game, doesn't it? Oh, look, it does indeed. And I thought that was just the guys uh, rolling over there. Could have been the uh, screen. There's absolutely cracking hats over there as well, especially from some of the guys as well. I know there was a hat there you were uh, particularly impressed with, mate, and could be rocking it come Melbourne Cup time as well. But... Um, look, yeah, as you mentioned, it's good to, just to see these kind of uh, activities end up happening in the Perth Footy League um, and just getting the crowd involved here. I know we were here for the um, for the same game last year and, look, uh, hopefully it's a cracker. As, look, both teams start to end their warm-ups now. I don't think we're going to be too far away from the, from the starting bounce. Um, what we might do is go to a very quick break and then we'll come back for the first bounce here at Curtin Uni. CBC and Curtin Uni Wesley from South Oval. And look, welcome back to this Round 11 clash out here at South Oval CBC and Curtin University. Wesley, as we mentioned, Curtin Uni haven't lost a game so far this year. CBC coming off a loss this week, but look, when these two teams met in Round 2, they end up really testing them with CBC only losing by 16 points. Both teams now in position, not far away from the first bounce. Mark Winnett picking CBC. I'm sitting with Curtin Uni. Look, hopefully you enjoy this broadcast as we're about to get underway. Interesting uh, ruck battle straight away. It looks like Richard Cronin for um, Curtin Wesley. Looks like he's going to start in the ruck there across against Tyler Chorwell. So, um, yeah, Chorwell probably not a noted ruckman, normally more probably of a key position player. And um, interestingly, Brock Higgins, it looks like he's started forward on Johnny Frampton. As the umpire throws the ball up in the middle of the ground, Cronin just goes up unopposed to start with and follows it up in his own ball. But the umpire has found something there, and it's going to go to the player in Dion Anthony. No, it goes to Hampson, actually. Hampson just goes to kick inside 50. Good lead-out mark there. And good passage of play straight away by CBC. And to mark on the chest by Jordan Newman. So Newman just goes and chips it up to the leading play there in Perham. And great passage of footy there straight away by CBC. Yeah, it really was. George Hampson starting in the middle today, which is a little good change up from Coach Liam Anthony. Why not put your best players around the ball when you're playing the best side, Ward? And um, really good start, and Jack Perham lining up to have his first look at the sticks today. So Perham kicked three last week. One of the shining lights for CBC. Strolls in, sets it up, and it's just going out to the left-hand side. But first score on the board for CBC. They lead this contest nice and early. Yep, a couple of shout-outs. Young Kai Mears making his debut. 640 days off an ACL award. Um, great effort, Kai, and um, good luck, young man. Hope you go really well. And look, absolutely great to see some of those uh, players come in today. How are you? As Curtin Uni, they just try and bring the ball in there, and it goes out of bounds on the full. So CBC will have an opportunity to bring it in. Good chip kick there, but turned over, unfortunately, straight away, and taken by the player in Carden Taylor. Taylor just goes and moves it quickly, finds a player on the outer side for Curtin Uni, and ends up hitting it up and doesn't quite hit up the big Zemac and goes out of bounds on the full, just on the far side. Yeah, not much wind around today. Ward quite still, so um, be able to score at both ends, um, which is great for this contest. 
see these best two sides all one and four going head to head here this afternoon. Magnificent conditions at South Oval. As the uh, CBC goes to play on, just kicks it inside. Once again, a good kick inside 50 and good mark out on the lead. And once again, it's that player in Jack Perham. And Perham looking very lively early on. He's ended up taking those couple of marks inside 50 and looks to be a real danger for the Curtin Uni side. Yep. So Perham on the runway, absolutely gun barrel straight. And that's the first goal on the board for both teams. CBC draw first blood and they lead this contest at one goal one. Curtin Uni yet to score. We've got about two and a half minutes in this first quarter. Yeah, Jack Perham looking very ominous. Obviously two hit-ups already. Good pair of hands. Two looks at the goals in the first two minutes of the game. And as a key forward, that's exactly what you want. And if you're the midfield to know that you've got a forward leading straight at you, He's got good jukes and he's up and about. Really good start from Fremantle CBC. They look lively, Ward. And I'm um, going to take it right up to him today. And Jack Pacelli looks like the, he's the match-up at the moment for Jack Perham. So, look, he's going to have his work cut out today, especially if uh, Perham is in uh, ominous form nice and early. But the umpire brings the ball back to the middle of the ground again. Look, it'll be the two same ruckman, I think, to start this contest now. As the umpire throws it up again, Cronin ends up winning that one, but good take out of the middle. And Salamone ends up picking up the ball, goes deep inside 50. Good spoil over the top there by the Curtin Uni player. Or oh, just spins out of trouble and can't quite pick it up, but good follow-up work there by the CBC side. Ball just bouncing out there, flicks around his body, kick inside 50 by Dion Anthony. One-on-one -on -one there. How will it roll? And well done going back with the ball there by Curtin Uni. And they just give the rush behind. Yep, noted Hampson just spat forward after that starting in the middle. He's gone forward now. Down Anthony in the middle for CBC. And look, that was something that Hampson used to do all the time, actually. He'd end up starting in the middle and then he'd just end up popping forward. He's that kind of dangerous play that can hurt you all around the ground. As Curtin Uni, just have it on that outer wing at the moment. Just kicks to a big pack of plays. Higgins, one of those there, just knocked down by CBC. They're trying to bust the ball out there. Tapped over the top by Johnny Frampton. Looks like the matchup for Higgins at the moment is Frampton still. Yep. And he'll follow him around the ground. Another matchup looking forward to one of my faves, Big Bucket's corner. And uh, Luke Harding. And Luke Harding giving a bit of size away. But, geez, he's a tough player, Luke Harding. And you earn every kick you get on him. And that's going to be a really pivotal matchup as to whether Harding can contain corner today or whether uh, Big Buckets gets free and is able to kick himself a bag. As the umpire throws in again, the two 23s go at each other, and this time could have been a free kick to Anthony there. No, it wasn't. Shoveled out beautifully. Couldn't be quite picked up by Luke Pearson. Turned over, though, by CBC. Good tackle pressure there by Matt Goss. And the umpire comes in to grab it again, throw it up. And we've gone just under five minutes in this first quarter. So umpire throws it up again. Knocked down by Cronin this time for uh, for Curtin Uni. Just hacked out. Big up and under kick. Good spoil over the top there by Miles Franklin. But picked up once again by Curtin Uni. They go inside. Higgins and corner. Corner. One grab. Can't quite pick it up. Well roved there. Gillum onto the right boot. And he has made an absolute... I can't even describe that one, mate. Yeah, and obviously no left foot gilly. He had players on everywhere um, inside and not really sure what he tried to do. But uh, he's limping a little bit after that kick too. Might have hurt a calf ward, just like I did this morning. And I'm moving a little bit better than him, but not too much at this point in time. Well, good to see him do it, playing the footy, not getting out of the car, mate. It's the, uh, <laughs> go to kick it down the ground there. A good juggled mark there by Richard Crone. He started the game pretty well so far for Curtin Uni. Yeah, former Claremont Ruckman Richard Cronin from Albany, I think, originally. The big fella. So kicks inside 50 again. Higgins! Absolute beauty of a mark there by the big man in Brock Higgins. And Frampton, he's going to have his work cut out for him today. Yeah, you can't let big Brock jump at the at the ball like that without a contest. He, he had a good match up there. He was caught on, on young Tommy Hooker at half back. And, yeah, the big fellow's got a big presence about him. Uh, played a lot of waffle football, Brock Higgins. And mainly as a ruckman forward secondary. But uh, we'll have a look at his uh, set shot here, Ward. So Higgins pretty much directly in front. He'll end up kicking it from probably about 35 metres. Higgins just chips it up nicely and straight through the middle there. Curtin Uni grabbed their first goal of the game and definitely a much-needed steadier there. Brock Higgins, the first goal scorer, and they are still behind in this contest at the moment. CBC one goal, two, eight, and that's Curtin Uni one goal straight. And we've got about six and a half minutes in this first quarter. 
Really good start, both sides just still finding each other's way. And um, another notable in for CBC today is Brendan Chen, I think former association, fairest and best midfielder back into the engine room today for, for Fremantle CBC. So it's good to see these players getting back in the contest. And Preston Rosario also playing his second game for Wesley Curtin Ward. So um, good to see players getting a chance as the season goes on. As the umpire brings the ball back again, once again it'll be Cronin against Chorwell. Throws it up again. Cronin just over the top there, and here was that player in Brendan Chen. Good tackle straight away by Lockie Dennis. And the umpire will come in and ball it up once again. So there it is. Ball goes up there. And Cronin looking to be the dominant ruckman at the moment. Able to knock it down, but great tackle there. Umpire says not holding the ball. No opportunity to get rid of it, and that was that play in Chris Lennon. It was very dominant last week, apparently. Chorwell takes that one out of the ruck this time. Grubber kick off the ground, doesn't go very far, but well picked up by Kurt Nini. Going inside, 50 buckets. Can't quite mark it. Well done by Harding to do well there, but picked up and going around the corner by Bryn Osborne, just smothered there, and a grubber kick just almost goes through. What will Frampton do? Just a clever kick around the corner. Ends up sitting pretty well. Good hands there. Flipping through the contest and just trying to clear the ball out was Barton Thompson, but doesn't quite work out. Goes through Rhett Mason. Well done by that player there in Tom Smith as CBC just go to run it out of defence now. Luke Pearson and knocked down by behind from Kyle Wheeler. Absolutely exceptional work by, uh, by Wheels there. Yeah, great defensive work, right, Kyle Wheeler. Well done. So good kick inside 50. How will it land just out the front there of the player and Brad Patterson can't quite pick it up. And the ball goes out of bounds. Luke Harding helping to knock it out. So about 40 metres around from the Curtin Uni goal. CBC started in red hot form. But Curtin Uni just starting to arrest it a little bit. Eight and a half minutes gone. And CBC leading by two points. As the umpire throws it again. Big Brock pushes him out. Look, that's going to be a free kick against. And go to Tyler Chorwell. He was lucky there, Chorwell. He went to the ground pretty quick to obviously... Try and accentuate the free kick, but uh, lucky the umpire paid it in 50 metres here now against Higgins for a little bit of a feedback, I think, to the umpire. But um, ball needs to get back to Charlisle, and CBC will go forward from here, Ward. So CBC with the ball right in the middle of the ground now. Free kick to Tyler Chowell. He goes to play on straight away. Oh, umpire <laughs> didn't call it on, but... Ball coming through the middle of the ground. Matt Ward just kind of fumbles it a little bit. Good pressure straight away from the Curtin side, but once again picked up almost by Tom Smith there. That could be a free kick to him, I think. Plays on, goes to advantage there. Kick inside 50 by Luke Pearson. Who's underneath it there? One of those was Jack Perham. Great ball behind there from the play in Bocelli. And the ball just goes out of bounds on that far side. But once again, a good inside 50 by CBC and going straight to that man in Jack Perham. Yeah, another player looking forward to seeing today is Matt Ward. Ward from CBC. Um, South Romano youngsters had a really good year so far through the midfield. Good accumulator of the ball. Really hard at it. So the umpire throws it in again. Cronin against Newman this time. Players asking for a free kick there. And the umpire comes in and balls it up. So Newman looks to be one of the backup ruckmen today for CBC. Him and Richard Cronin go at it again. Probably knocked over the top by Cronin this time. Good ball out on the far side there and just a nice clearing kick up the line. Almost lands in the lap of the uh, CBC player, but great work going back with the flight of the ball by the Curtin University player. Just shuffles it out there and goes and kicks it up the ground. Buckets just out on the lead. Ends up taking a smart mark there. He's got players running from him. One of those was Buick. Up and under kick, not really to advantage, but Buick, good work there. Great spoil there by the player in Luke Pearson. Well done by the big Z-Mac, Zach McCarry. Flicks it out there. Kick on goal by Lockie Dennis. And straight over the goal umpire's head and great ball movement by Kurt Uni. Just sheer pressure. Ends up putting it through and that's the second on the board now. And we've got about 11 minutes in this first quarter. Yeah, good finish from the skipper today, Lockie Dennis. Um, the kick going in from corner just at Buick and had the whole 50 metre available too. Obviously just sat it up but they were able to recover from that and... Hard, hard nut, that is Lockie Dennis. Put it through for their second. And, yeah, they've settled after um, CBC. Looked a pretty strong start, Ward. But um, Kurt Uni just seemed to have settled in the last couple of minutes. Looking pretty ominous. Yeah, look, uh, they're looking very good so far. And uh, we thought it was going to be CBC all over, especially with Perham looking very dangerous and Hampson starting well in the middle. But they end up resting the advantage now. As, look, they lead this contest now. Two goals straight. 
CBC one goal two. Once again, umpire with the ball back in the middle of the ground. The Cronin against Chorwell as he throws it up there. Cronin once again takes it out, but good pick up there by Salamone. Could be a free kick there, and it's going to... Salamone, I think, for high tackle. Ward is going to go to Salamone there. Really tough nut. Luke Salamone kicks goals too. Um, plays a midfielder, so they're the mids you really like. They can hit the scoreboard as well. And goes and kicks it long now. Advantage there. Great spoil over the top by the play in Sam Dennis. And that goes out of bounds. Just inside 50 there for the CBC side. So good conditions out here at South Oval. Great game of footy we've got. Curtin Uni first place, CBC in fourth place as the umpire throws it again. Just taken out of the ruck. That could have been holding the ball. No, says the umpire there. As they just flick the fall forward. Oh, great tackle straight away by that play from Curtin Uni. And the umpire comes in and grabs it again. You can hear lots of feedback already coming from the Curtin Uni bench. As the umpire throws it up. Good knock that time by Chorwell. Big pack of players there. End up burying his head, does that play there. And the umpire will come and grab it back again. Three stoppages in a row. And just good pressure from both sides at the moment. As the umpire throws it up again. Double tap by both sides. Cronin able to pick that one out. Just almost pulled out of there by Aaron Callahan, the backman for uh, Curtin Uni. But picked up by Hampson. Hampson comes out of attack. Just flicks it out beautifully. Flicks it back to that play in Dion Anthony. And runs into an open goal there. An absolutely great ball movement there by that CBC side. And Dion Anthony on the board for... CBC. Yeah, George Hampson in traffic there. Really clean, wasn't he? Um, dished it off and Anthony's had a good start. Ward, he's an accumulator. Dion Anthony gets a lot of football and he's very, very dangerous forward. Uh, former Geraldton product. Spent a bit of time with the Sharks. Younger brother of the coach, obviously, Liam Anthony. Looks a clone of Liam too in the younger days. But um, started really well. And both midfield still just trying to sort each other out here. But the likes of Salomone and Anthony... Um, as Higgins just goes in and asserts himself and looks like he's given away a free kick, I think, actually. Has he? Yeah, Higgins, he, he might have actually... Yeah, give uh, Anthony just a little love tap and um, give him one away in the middle here, Ward. Anthony will put the ball back inside 50 for CBC. Yeah, so a, a free kick uh, before the bounce there and a 50 metre already from Brock Higgins. Probably having a bit of a dirty day so far, apart from the uh, goal he kicks a little bit earlier. As CBC go to go inside 50 and Hampson marks that one there. Bit of feedback there to the Curtin Uni player. Doesn't sound like George. No, nah, not at all. <laughs> it looks to be about 55, I think, from goal. We well, you reckon, Ward, he's, uh, those hammies aren't getting any younger, but um, is this beyond him? Oh, no, he's a good kick of the footy. Hampson sets sail. Absolute beauty just across the face of goal. And that's another behind for Fremantle CBC. They, they lead this contest two goals, three. Curtin Uni, two goals straight. And we've gone just under 15 minutes in this first quarter. So Curtin Uni just go to bring it in. This is normally the way they try and bring it in. Good stretching mark there by the Curtin player. Just go to kick it up the line there. Higgins end up just being infringed on. And look, he'll get the ball this time there. So Brock Higgins with the ball looks to go inboard. But doesn't quite see the option. Just decides to flick it across there. Bad handball there. Knocked away by Anthony. CBC will go in and grab it again. It was Anthony this time. Could have been a free kick there, but it wasn't. Chorwell just goes and picks it up. Quick handball out there, but great tackle by the player there in Matty Goss. Just able to bring that ball out there. Good follow-up work there. And a great tackle again. The umpire says that is holding the ball. Unlucky there by Dion Anthony, but look, absolutely great tackle by the Curtin Uni player. I think uh, it's been reversed. It's a rough tackle. Um, is that right? Anthony's going to get this one, Ward. So he goes, uh, getting very aggressive today, Big Brock. He's throwing that frame around, isn't he? Yeah, definitely. And a bit of feedback there as well. And good kick inside 50 and a player all by himself has taken that mark. And we'll go back and have a set shot on goal. And uh, look, uh, yeah, Craig White will be wanting his boys to uh, settle down a little bit at the moment, I think. Yeah, well, they had to hold him the ball. Unfortunately, it was a rough tackle. And umpire Warabet came in and he made the right decision. And now we see Luke Salomon lining up from 45 metres out. So Salamone sets its sail. Looks to be a pretty good kick off the boot. Genuinely gun barrel straight and over the umpire's head. Three goals on the board now for Frio CBC. And look, Mark Winnett's done well so far. He's uh, picking them to be a side that's going to really contend today. And look, that they are taking a lead. And Salamone with his first goal for the day. Yeah, that goal-kicking midfielder we mentioned, Luke Salamone. Um, 
I think he kicked four the other week playing out of the middle. Warts obviously spends a bit of time mid forward, but um, yeah, magnificent finish. And um, things just need to settle down a little bit here. Kurt and Uni spent a little bit undisciplined a couple of times, just trying to assert their authority. But um, CBC boys are standing up to that at the moment. We've got a great contest on our hands. And look, both sides actually have those goal kicking midfield as well. With uh, you know, you have Lockie Dennis that all. Um, go through there as well. We've seen Chris Leonard kick four, I think, a couple of times, or at least once this year as well. I mean, Shawnee Buick's <coughs> kicked a few. So, look, uh, it's one of those things you need in this competition. As the umpire throws it up again, Chorwell probably wins that one, but great tackle there by Dion Anthony. And the umpire will come and throw it up again right on the bullseye. So Higgins back in the ruck, as we mentioned again, knocked down by Higgins this time, and just tries to barrel the ball out there is Brad Patterson, but once again set upon by Dion Anthony. So 17 and a half minutes gone in this contest at the moment. CBC with a nine-point lead. The umpire throws it up once again. A good run at the ball this time from Chorwell. Salamone tries to knock the ball out there, but stacks on. Ball just bouncing around. Higgins, it comes out to him. Interesting kick inside 50. The player underneath it there. And great mark going with the flight there was Bryn Osborne. So Brynny Osborne just looks for his option. Buckets coming out the footy nice and hard. Well done there by that player in Frampton. Just able to get in the way. Good work by Tom Smith. Does hold the ball in there. And the umpire says that will be a throw up there. About 40 metres away from the Curtin Uni goal. Love how big Buckets just leads hard and straight. Ward, get out of my way, he says. As the umpire throws the ball up again. Well done by Red Malovich. Able to pick the ball up. CBC just trying to come out there. Well done by that player in Brody Knight. Just works his way out. Kicks it down the line. Oh, but great pick off there by the Curtin Uni player. Goes inside 50. Well done there by Miles Franklin. Able to just knock it down. And ends up holding that ball in. Great defensive work by oh, Franklin. That was fantastic. One on three. The little fella, Miles Franklin. And half the contest. Stoppage. Big win that for CBC. Well done, Miles Franklin. They're the sort of efforts you're going to need all day today if you're going to beat this side. And as the umpire throws it up again, McCarry, I think it was this time in the ruck, just picked up there. Well done by Brennan Gillum. As you mentioned, no left foot there, unfortunately, and just goes out to the left-hand side and out of bounds, a free kick. We're taken by Luke Harding. It's come back to hurt him a couple of times, hasn't it, Ward? Just that ability, inability, I should say, just to be able to kick on that left side 10 or 15 metres. Really showing up a couple of times early for Gillum, who's obviously a very good player, um, but it's just but it's just a weakness that obviously has been exposed a little bit early. So Harding kicks it in and finds Chorwell. Chorwell just strolls out of the fence, long kick down the line, but picked off by the Curtin player just on that outer side. So Curtin will reload, look to go inside 50. Lockie Dennis under there, McCarry one of those as well. Well done by Gillum. Uses that right foot again, but knocked off there by Frampton. Frampton just uses his hands. Hits up Brody Knight. Frampton keeps running. Though. Does it sit for him? It doesn't quite. Well done there by Curtin Uni. Big Higgins able to pick it up there, but tackled straight away. Ferocious play from both teams there, and it stacks on the mills, and the umpire will come in and say, look, that's the ball up. It's gone just under 20 minutes now in this first quarter. CBC still leading this contest. Three goals, 3-21. Curtin Uni just the two goals straight, 12 the umpire throws it up again. Higgins able to knock it down. And the ball goes out of bounds just on that far side. It's a real luxury, isn't it, when you've got likes of Richard Cronin and Brock Higgins to be able to rotate out of the ruck at this level, Ward? Absolutely right. As the umpire throws the ball in again, shallow throw in there. Goes to Higgins there. He's just able to shuffle it out and go along inside 50 now. Corner out on the lead. Just goes over his head there, but well done by Lockie Dennis. Able to snap it around the body. Picked up by the player in defence there. Oh, turnover. Osborne. And Osborne just knocks it out to the right-hand side. First blemish for Kurt Nuni, and look, a goal they should have kicked. Yeah, got away with that one. Johnny Frampton just able to slam it on the boot and get it going forward, not over finesse in the back half. But um, fortunately, we've got away with that one. So Andreoli, normally a good long left foot kick, and that's not a bad one at all. Just goes over the top there. Three Curtin Uni plays. One of those going back with the ball is Daniel Hill. Hill just smothered off his boot. Sits really well there for McCarry. Goes to Wheeler. Wheeler goes over the top there. Finds a the player there in Kai Mears, the first game. And Mears inside 50. Dropped by the big buckets. Good tackle pressure, Bryn Osborne, and that is holding the ball. Great pressure, Bryn Osborne. Right in front of the marquee. They got up and about for that one. Showed his closing speed there and that great defensive pressure from the forward, young Osborne, and he should go back, Warden, kick his first of the day. 
So Bryn Osborne, he ended up missing one just out on the run, probably less than a minute ago now. And he'll end up kicking this one, probably in front of 45 degree angle and probably from, probably about 40 metres out. So Bryn Osborne looking to put the third goal on the board for Kurt Nuni. Steps in, kicks it just out to the left-hand side and almost straight over the goalpost there. I wasn't sure what the umpire was going to say, but that's another behind on the board for Kurt Nuni. They're still behind this contest. Two goals, 2-14. Two Great CBC. kick by Franklin. Really aggressive kick in that one. Looking for fast play here, CBC. Can they keep rolling? Absolutely. A leak kick there and finds Anthony. And Anthony uh, enjoying the little bit of... Uh, Back and forth with Higgins at the moment. Just chips it up there and goes to run past. But good mark there by Luke Pearson. Just happy to take a bit of time. Probably the first slow play we've really seen throughout the game today and just chipped up there. Finds a the player there in Tom Wright. So Wright will just go that nice 45 kick inside. 50 Salamone, one of those players around the ball there. Flicks out, goes to Brendan Chen. Steps inside onto his right foot and absolutely chips it up beautifully. Not picked up there by the CBC player. Good pressure around the footy there and great tackle. What's the umpire going to say? He's going to say, give it to me. Good tackle there by the play in Jeff Saunders. Almost able to cause a turnover. Yep, seen some good tackles this first quarter. As we expect, the A-grade game of the day. The umpire throws it up again. Higgins and Chorwell in the ruck. Could have been in his back possibly there. And the umpire says, no, not quite. Come back to me and look, just under two minutes left to go in this quarter now. CBC leading three goals, three, 21. Kurt Uni, two goals, two as Higgins just knocks that one forward. Sits out there in front of George Hampson, ends up picking it up beautifully, just shovels it back to there in that player in Luke Pearson. Goes back to Anthony. Anthony goes underneath and good pick up there. Quick hand zone, McCarry comes out there just to this far side. Out to the big forward there in... Uh, Bucket's corner wasn't able to pick it up and well done by the defensive unit from CBC's Franklin just goes and picks it up and goes out to the middle part of the ground, finds Knight. Knight says, look, keep running, son, and kicks it out to the advantage of Tom Smith. Great tackle there from behind by the player there from uh, Curtin Uni and Kai Mears. And Mears gets the free kick, finds Osborne, but great tackle there Bright Brody Knight. And I think that is holding the ball. Good tackle pressure there from both sides. Absolutely, yeah, really hot contest. As we said a couple of times, really enjoying this one, this first quarter. It's had everything so far. CBC, we're looking to kick another one before quarter time and um, open up a two-goal lead. Oh, Knight, he's just turned it over. Un unfortunate kick there. And Curtin Uni, look, they're going to have their last opportunity to reload now. About 30 seconds left to go in this quarter. I'll just look to bring it through the middle and finds Mason. Haven't seen a lot of him so far, but that's a good long kick. Just won't land quite inside 50. Well done by Franklin. Just able to knock the ball down. Lockie Dennis able to pick it up, but great tackle straight away. And look, that will be starting to get close to quarter time. Still a little bit more to go. Not sure if there's going to be another opportunity to score, though. As the umpire will throw it up. Once again, Chorwell and Higgins. Chorwell able to just take that one. Good kick inside 50. They'll need a mark there if they want to have a shot. On goal, no mark there. Lands in the hands of Osborne, but picked up by the CBC player. And that is quarter time out here at South Oval. Fremantle CBC leading this contest at the moment. Three goals, 3-21. Kurt Nuni, two goals, 2-14. Goal scorers from both sides so far. CBC, all singles to Salamone, Perham and Dion Anthony. Kurt Nuni, also single goal scorers for Lockie Dennis and Brock Higgins. But look, Mark, it's just been a, a good contest so far. Great contest, yep. For the rest of the game is as good as that first quarter. We're in for a treat today, Ward and listeners, so... Really looking forward to how this one's going to play out. And look, uh, we'll uh, go to a quick break now, but don't go anywhere. Make sure you come back and join us for this second quarter of footy out at South Oval. CBC leading this contest at the moment.
And back here at South Oval, Curtin University, home of the Curtin Uni Wesley footy side. Look, they're uh, in for a real battle today. Fremantle CBC leading this contest at quarter time. Three goals, 3-21. Curtin Uni, two goals, two. And look, we just saw some uh, now vision in front of us there of Craig White just addressing his troops there. And look, he seemed quite passionate there, Mark. Yeah, he's always passionate, Craig White. And, uh, you know, doesn't take 10-0. and zero, Drives really tough standards and wouldn't have been... Probably too happy with that start, but um, he shouldn't be too disappointed either. CBC have been pretty good, as have Curtin Uni Wesley, so um, great contest on our hands. Look, indeed, and look, CBC, I think Liam Anthony would be pretty happy with that game so far, or for the start of the game so far, and we definitely would have taken the uh, the uh, small lead going into quarter time. But here we are, once again, umpire in the middle of the ground, just waiting for a few of the spectators to uh, slowly take their... Uh, Taking their time getting off the oval. But look, we shouldn't be too far away from a start here. And once again, it looks like we'll have Cronin in the ruck. And probably Chorwell again, I think, in the middle for the CBC footy club. So almost got all the spectators off the ground now. The siren goes. And here we are ready to go for this second quarter as the umpire throws it up. Good knock there by Cronin, but knocked down straight away. By the players there from Curtin. Follows up his own work. Goes inside 50 there. But great mark going back with the flight of the ball is Harding, I think it was. So just goes to play on there. Finds Chorwell, the mobile ruckman. Ends up dropping that one and inside 50 by Patterson from Curtin Uni. And great mark there taken by Brennan Gilliman. But he just wasn't able to get back there, was he? I think that could have been actually Miles Franklin that kicked that one out before. Yeah, needed to take that one, Charwell, unfortunately. Good size make you pay on the turnover. And uh, now we see Curtin Uni Wesley having a shot on goal. So Brendan Gillam, he's had a couple of shots on goal. It absolute shocker to start with the first quarter and then just faded to the left-hand side a bit earlier. Gillam shouldn't have any problems with this one. Jeez, it almost looked like it was going to make the distance, but it does indeed, and that's the first goal on the board for Curtin Uni in this second quarter. It's only taken a minute. And they end up with their first goal for the quarter. And Curtin Uni, three goals, two. Just trailing Fremantle CBC by the one point now. Good start to the uh, quarter on the Curtin Uni Wesley side. First goal of the quarter is always important. And um, just trying to look and see if there's any, been any changes for any of the coaches' war. But much the same. We see Hampson forward and Pacelli on Perham. Good midfield battle in there. The likes of Anthony, Salomone and Ward up against Dennis. Uh, Mason in there, I think it is, for Curtin Uni Wesley. So plenty of quality around the ground. Is indeed as the umpire throws it up again. Cronin just ends up floating over the top. They are able to take it out. Dion Anthony can't quite grab it, but Lockie Dennis does for Curtin Uni. Goes inside 50 corners there, but knocked down straight away. Gillum, good handball out, finds the play there. And Higgins, Higgins loses it there and good work going back with the flight of the ball there. Frampton just guts it onto the left foot there and well done going back with the flight of the footy. footy was Mason. Mason just picks it up and steps inside and well done finds the player there in I think that could be Lockie Dennis might have taken that mark inside 50. Yeah it looks like it'd be the skipper today Lockie Dennis going back for his what would be his second if he's able to kick it. This would be a, a very very positive start after Craig White's address at quarter time. If the skipper can go back and kick this one. Oh, I think it actually could be. Might be the first gamer in Kai Mears, I think, just out on that far side. I think it is. So Mears just goes, kicks, and ends up hitting the woodwork. Almost could have been a first goal on debut for Kai Mears. Just out to the left side. And three minutes into this second quarter, we are absolutely even. Stevens now here, Fremantle CBC and Curtin Uni Wesley, both three goals, three. Let's see how Miles Franklin tries to bring the ball back in for CBC, what their method's going to be to bring the ball back in from their defensive half. So Franklin just goes to play on there. Well done by Gillum on the mark. You don't see much of that very often. Good follow-up work there by Miles Franklin. He uh, obviously wasn't too wrapped with his uh, kick and just exceptional follow work by that player. Gillum has been dangerous forward. Ward, I've only ever seen him playing across sort of half-back, um, but good change-up. He's had a number of chances today, hasn't he? Put a lot of pressure on. Yeah, it looks to be a very dangerous four, and I think could be with uh, Diolio out. They uh, looks like they've probably tried that one there as the umpire throws in again. Higgins just barrels through there, barges his way through. Kick inside, 50, picked up there by Tom Smith. Just uses his time beautifully, and a nice 
relieving kick there finds Salamone. So lots of players around the footy. Not an awful lot of movement at the moment. And Salamone just goes and chips it there. Finds that player in Jordan Williamson. So Williamson just chips it up. Almost an attempt of mark there by the CBC player, but can't quite grab it. Good work under pressure there. Good set of hands. Knight just goes back there. Hacked around the body. Cronin good, goes for good spoil. Hampson almost able to get it, but flicks the ball back. Blaine Wilson, ever reliable there. Flicks it across and Carden Taylor goes to kick inside 50. Good spoil coming over the top by that player there in Thomas Hooker. And we'll have a throw in probably about 70 metres around from the Curtin Uni goal. Just got a spare again behind the ball at the moment in Blaine Wilson. Not what you really want. Liam Anthony might want to equalise that one. Make sure he's got even numbers ahead of the ball because uh, Blaine Wilson dropping off, very dangerous. As the umpire throws it up again, Cronin knocks it down. Almost pulled out of that one by the CBC player, but good kick inside 50 by Bryn Osborne. Higgins almost able to take that mark. Jumped on straight away by the CBC player and the umpire has frowned a free kick. Once again, another free kick against Brock Higgins. And the umpire calls a play on CBC. Just go and kick it up the line there. And good mark there by Red Melijack. So Rado with the ball now. Just goes and chips it up to the hot spot there. Good. Oh, and good mark going back with the flight of the ball there by the CBC player. Just goes and plays on. Finds that player in the middle of the ground in Tom Wright. So Wright just waiting for the play to unfold in front of him. And just goes and chips it up nicely. Wants a play, I think, in Franklin on that far side. It just goes up the line. Perham out on the lead there, and it's just out of bounds on the full. And look, a couple of uh, uncharacteristic uh, few errors there for uh, Miles Franklin. Just struggling to get the ball uh, forward to centre at the moment, CBC. Their offensive ball movement's just breaking down a little bit at the moment. As Kyle Wheeler goes inside 50, plenty of targets to go to. Ball goes over the top. Higgins just... Pushes it out there and finds McCarry, I think that was. So Zach McCarry, first goal on the board for him, and that's two in the books now for CB, or Curtin Uni, I should say. And they end up taking a six-point lead. And look, we've gone just under six minutes now in this second quarter. Yeah, as I was sort of alluding to before, the, the Fremantle CBC back line's been under enormous pressure. They held up really well, and their ball movement from their back 50's been pretty good. It's just that next connection, I think, Ward, the wingers... Um, and the midfielders, the likes of Pearson and these sort of players right on the wing need to connect a little bit better and then get that ball flowing forward. We saw Perham getting right up on the wing there trying to get involved before, which um, obviously they need him a bit closer to the goal than that, but um, they can get back to what they did in the first quarter, CBC. Just got to get back to taking some risks with that ball movement and going fast when they get a chance. But um, Curtin Uni been very impressive so far this quarter. And look, the engine room for CBC still looks absolutely red hot. And uh, look, George Hampson sitting at full forward, interesting at the moment. So look, he'll be a uh, challenging prospect if they can get it deep there. As CBC go to walk this one out of it through Matt Ward. Matt Ward just chips it around his body. Sits pretty well there for their play in Jordan Williamson, but had someone in his hammer. Flicks out the back. Tyler Chorwell finds himself all by himself. Flicks it across there, across to Brendan Chen. Steps inside, just a up and under kick. Oh, and it just caught his player unaware there. And the player there, I think it is in, might be Sam Dennis. No, it wasn't. Play there in Daniel Hill, actually. Able to take that mark and kicks it across and finds Sam Dennis. So Curtin Uni just happy to take a bit of time, assess their options. Dennis just goes long down the line there. Across to the big down there. Richard Cronin can't quite take the mark, but he's able to get it on the second bounce. Rado just able to pick that one out, flips it out to the far side. Good follow-up work on the outer side by Buick. And the umpire will come and grab that one as it just goes out of bounds. So seven and a half minutes gone in this contest. Curtin Uni leading it by six points. As the umpire goes to throw it in again. The 223 is going at it. This time knocked over the top by Cronin once again. Brennan Chen just able to pick it up. Does well to get out of that one there, but turned over and finds Chris Leonard. Leonard goes and kicks along there. Well done, Mike McCarry. Uses his body exceptionally well there. I think the CBC player thought he might have been held. Umpire said no as he goes to kick inside 50. Bit of an up and under kick. How will it sit? Higgins just doing his best work there, but well done and well tackled there by the player from CBC Footy Club. Can't see who that was, but really strong presence there on Higgins. He was probably going to almost uh, wander across and, and have an open shot on goal. Would have been Andrew Oley, I think, Ward from here, um, but not 100% sure. But, yeah, great pressure and good committed act from Andrew Oley if I think it was him. 
So Higgins and Frampton doing the work in the ruck this time and a shallow kick there. Higgins able to take that one out, just knocks the ball forward. CBC coming out. Higgins on his right foot and kicks it around the corner and spoiled through. I think it was actually by James Corner spoiling it through for a rush behind for his side. And once again, Kurt Uni just adding to that lead very slowly. It's been all them in this second quarter. As CBC go and bring the ball in now, just sits it up nicely, goes to chip it across the middle of the ground, and great kick finds the play in Tom Wright. Uses the ball really well, doesn't he, Miles Franklin? Yeah, a couple of uncharacteristic kicks earlier in the game, but look here, he won't have too many of those as Wright just chips it and finds Chorwell. So Tyler Chorwell, starting ruckman for CBC today, just goes and kicks it, kicks it to a two-on-one. Blaine Wilson just coming over the top there and spoils in front of the player in Jordan Newman for CBC. And we'll have a throw-in right on the interchange bench. He will do that all day, Blaine Wilson, unless you equalise numbers ahead of the ball. He will just continue to come across and spoil. He reads the play very, very well, and he loves that drop-off. So once again, Cronin versus Chorwell. Cronin able to knock that one down. Good follow-up work for the big fella as well. Salamone on his hammer and picked up there by Chris Leonard, who is gang-tackled straight away. Umpire goes and throws it up. Chorwell goes early, probably ends up taking that one. Almost goes and hacks it off the ground. Hampson could have been held. Oh, ends up getting some cauliflower ears as he goes over the boundary line there. And a yeah. nice bit of uh, close attention by ba Brad Patterson. Bit unlucky not to get a kick there, Hampson, but they need to see a bit more George Hampson around the ball. He can give him a real spark. I like this matchup of Callahan on Hampson there, actually. Great knock there. Picked up straight away by the player in Lockie Dennis. Just snaps it around his body, but well done by Miles Franklin. Just takes that mark out in front of Zach McCarry. So Franklin onto his right boot, plays on. Good kick inside 50. Good knock over the top there by Dennis. How will it sit? It sits very well for that player there in Dion Anthony. And just out to the right-hand side. Another behind on the board for CBC. But look, most importantly, their first score of this second quarter and we've got about 11 minutes as Kurt and Uni just go and kick the ball nice and long, Carden Taylor with a kick in there, good kick over the top just tries to get out of the front there well done by CBC, that player there in Leonard, he ended up going to Mason, back to Leonard again kicks across there, on oh, good mark in front there by Luke Harding, just able to get in front of James Corner and takes the relieving mark for CBC Jeez, He's been exceptional so far Harding very very solid down there well done by Cronin there, goes across, but good pressure there by Salamone. Once again, it was Leonard able to get that one, finds his partner in crime in Mason. Mason goes on to the left boot there, goes inside 50. Once again, Harding just able to knock it forward. Oh, high tackle there on that far side. Be a free kick to CBC. So high tackle there this time by the debutant in Kai Mears. And CBC will just get to settle a little bit. And try and bring the ball through the middle of the ground. Go the long kick now. A few of the big men in there. All of them go up. And no one able to pick that one out. Good barreling contest through there. Great tackle there by CBC. Buried his face. Free kick against. And they've decided to play advantage. Good work in the middle of the ground. Perham goes inside 50. Doesn't quite sit there. Good tackle there by the play in Justin Morrissey. And the umpire will come and grab it. About 52 metres out from the CBC goal. About halfway through the quarter so far. Kurt Newney got a one goal lead. As the umpire throws it up again. Good quick hands out there by Patterson. And what's the umpire seen there? He's pulled a free kick. I think that's a high contact one. And once again to Chris Leonard. Good quarter by Leonard so far. Yeah, last week apparently had in the mid, mid to high 30s Chris Leonard. We know what he's capable of. Big bodied midfielder in the Perth Football League. So Daniel Hill just goes to switch it across. Not the greatest kick by Daniel Hill. And Ben Preedy couldn't quite get it there. And we'll have another throw in right near the scoreboard here. Out at South Oval, the home of the Curtin Uni Wesley Footy Club. We've got about halfway through this quarter. Curtin Uni leading this one. Four goals, 428. CBC, three goals, 422. As the umpire throws it up again, Anthony able to pick one out. Almost end up throwing it out of that contest. Well done. Good shrug of the tackle there. Not the best handball there, but great work by the play in Matt Ward. He looks to be a pretty good midfielder there for uh, the CBC side. Yeah, real accumulator is the mail I've got. South Fremantle midfielder, really young. Probably should still be playing at waffle level, but been very, very good for CBC so far this year. So Higgins back in the ruck for Curtin. This time won by, oh, Wheeler taken high there. 
and put his body on the line there. High tackle through there by Bailey Holman. So Kyle Wheeler goes on to his left foot, just decides to kick it long there. It's going to be a two-on-one. Oh, well done by corner. Just able to spoil that one. Yeah, and good follow-up work there. Lands in the hands of Higgins straight away in the back by Chorwell there. Well done by CBC. Just trying to come out, finds Bocelli. Good hands forward there. No one able to quite take that ball out of the contest, but picked up this time by Barton Thompson. Tackled straight away there. And good pressure from both sides as the ball goes out of bounds. Once again in front of the interchange bench. And a real hot contest we've got here down at South Oval today. Absolutely great contest, as we said earlier. Expected to be like this for most of the day today. So the umpire throws it in again. Higgins able to take that one out. Anthony going through. Can't quite pick it up. But Ratto just tackled as he went through it. Able to flick it out there. Chen going through the contest there. Could have been taken high. No, he wasn't. Oh, well done there by the player there from CBC. Wheeler tries to draw the high contact but can't. And that's a great tackle there by Matty Ward again from Fremantle CBC. Yeah, both sides going in really, really hard. Chen in and under. Good to see some really tough footy played this afternoon. So Higgins takes that one out of the ruck this time. Anthony once again takes it and tackled over the line by Rhett Mason. Buick's been a bit quiet so far. Ward, haven't seen a lot of him on the wing today. Yeah, the ball, I have to say, it feels like the ball's been played through the middle of the ground a little bit today and just lots of stoppages. So not a lot of open plays so far. But you know normally is uh, these games start to open up as the game goes on. Higgins just uses his body but can't quite grab it out. Mason goes to duck down and pick it up. But followed over the line there by Tyler Chorwell. And Shawnee Buick actually comes off for a bit of a rest. Again, we'll see CBC with an extra number up at the stoppage. Kurt Uni Wesley with a plus one. So obviously CBC trying to win the footy at the source. Curtin happy to sit back and let, watch it come in. So Higgins just takes that one out of the ruck. Good kick inside 50. Doesn't quite land for the Curtin play. Does for CBC. CBC just looking to bring it out this far side. One of the first times we've seen some open footy on the far side. Good kick inside there. But good spoil over the top by, by Preedy. Finds Chris Leonard. Leonard just goes to chip it up the ground. Not his greatest kick. Finds Franklin. Good tackle pressure there from that side. Turns it over and finds Rhett Mason. Up and under kick. Going back with the flight of the footy there was the play in Barton Thompson. Yeah, great courage, Thompson, wasn't it? Going back with the flight of there, Ward. Absolutely great. And flicks it across to the far side. Great kick. Finds Dion Anthony. Anthony looks to handball in board. Does that beautifully there. Finds Matty Ward. Matty Ward, as you mentioned, starting to accumulate a few. Just goes for a few. Smothered off the boot, though. Turned over and finds Leonard again. Goes for Rad Malovich. Well done by Chris Leonard. Just finds it again. Kicks inside 50 to the advantage of corner. And that's an absolutely exceptional kick inside 50. And Bucket's corner will get his first set shot on goal for today. Yeah, hasn't that all his way so far? Big buckets, but we know he doesn't need many looks, Ward. He got caught on Frampton there, one-on-one. -on -one. Luke Harding will be spewing. But uh, he goes, gets a chance to go back and kick his first big buckets. He's been working really hard. Just hasn't got on the end of any just yet. So corner, normally a very good set shot for goal. And look, that's not one he'll... Uh Want to ring home about, unfortunately, there. But look, Curtin Uni, they extend their lead. Four goals, 5-29. CBC, three goals, 4-22. Look, we've got about 19 minutes in this second quarter. Sorry, I should say we've gone about 18 minutes in this second quarter. My mathematics is absolutely shocking, Mark. <laughs> That's okay, mate. We'll forgive you for that. You're not a maths teacher. You're calling the footy ward. That's the main thing. But uh, it is a big seven or eight minutes for the game at the moment. Obviously, uh, CBC want to hang in there, and Curtin Uni be looking to uh, kick another couple. So, big time of the game to see who's going to arrest that momentum. And picked off there by the player in Kai Mears. Goes and kicks it inside 50 there. Actually, that was Mears there that the ball went through his hand. Good follow-up work. Ratto just able to pick that one up. Goes back with the ball there. Once again, Leonard kicks around his body. Good spoil going over the top there by Dion Anthony. Pick up there. Handball inboard. Sits quite well for Mason. No, that was... Uh, Osborne, actually, but good clearing kick there by Harding. But great mark going back with the flight of the ball and real courage by that curtain player. And look, we can't see who that was at the moment, but definitely getting up a bit sore from that one. Just a uh, not the greatest kick, Luke Harding, on that occasion. They should have come out to this broadcast side. Unfortunately, he went back into trouble. I think it might have been young Wright and Harding just threw it on his foot and Landed in the corridor, and now we see Curtin Uni Wesley with, you know, not an easy shot at goal ward, but a good look from that position on the ground. 
Absolutely right. So it is Red Malajak that's going to go for that one. And look, he started to come to the game a lot more in this second quarter. And look, Rado, normally a reasonably good set shot from goal. Distance shouldn't be a problem, nor should the angle. It's all just going to be how he kicks it. Kicks it out to the right-hand side and stays out that way and through for another behind. Four goals, six now on the board. That's 30. CBC, and what have we... Well, they were just trying to discuss what was actually going on there. I think we've got a free kick, have we? Well, the umpires just waved the point, but I think there's a free kick. Is it going to Gillum in the goal square? Not sure what's quite happening down here at the moment. Yeah, well, the umpire, they've they've waved the behind on there. But they look to be coming back, and have they give them a free kick to the CBC side. Umpire's just conferring at the moment. Senior umpire Mark Warabet coming in. He'll take control of this. Very, very experienced, as we've seen several times, but... Gillum thinks he's got a free kick, and the umpire has waved the point, so it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. Yeah, look, both teams look like they're setting up for a uh, well, either the ball to come back in or getting ready to go back to the middle of the ground for almost a guaranteed goal. The time just ticking away at the moment. No one's able to quite make a decision on what is going on. Fortunately, we don't have a review system, as we know down here. There's a lot of discussion, but... Let's make a decision. I think umpire Warwick saying it's a free kick. Yeah, it is. And Gillum's going to go from the goal square and kick his second. So a goal there for Brennan Gillum, two in this quarter. I don't think that last behind will obviously count then for this game. So that should be five goals, 5.35. Now Curtin Uni just starting to extend that lead. CBC Fremantle, three goals, 4.22. Look, only one behind in this quarter so far for CBC. And look, they're going to have a lot of work going into half time. Yeah, not their greatest quarter after starting so strongly. They've just dropped off a little bit. Now's the time for George Hampson, Dion Anthony, players like Pearson through the midfield. Ward we've spoken about. Um, they need to get back on top, rest, rest a bit of momentum, Ward, because we know how quickly and how hard Curtin Uni Wesley can score. Um, and the game can be away from you before you know it. And look, good to see Hampson back in the middle there, along with Dion Anthony as well. And I think that other midfielder, could be the run with player there as well. But good knock through there. Well done by Patterson. Can't quite get the ball out there. Just fumbling around. Higgins just jumps on top of the footy and tackled by Dion Anthony straight away. And the umpire will come in and throw it out. And Higgins and Anthony look being absolutely at it all day. I love the feeling out there. So umpire throws it up again. Higgins against Chorwell. Higgins able to knock that one out. Good hands back there. Snapped around the body by the play in Luke Pearson. Sits pretty well there. Good pick up there, but great tackle by Carden Taylor. That was Brody Knight that was able to pick that one up before. And CBC tackled straight away through Matty Ward. And it'll go back to the umpire. And we'll have another ball up. Three and a half minutes left to go in this second quarter. Higgins knocks it through straight through the hands of Rad Malovic. Goes to Mason it was back to Rado. Rado just chips it up and finds the player there in Patterson. Patterson just goes to handball forward there. Mason running ahead the play. Oh, good tackle there. Just flicks the ball forward there. Doesn't quite land for McCarry. Good handball back there by CBC, but turned over straight away by Barton Thompson. Follows up with some great tackle pressure. And the umpire will go and throw it up. Probably 40 metres from goal. Curtin Uni looking to try and stamp their authority. Get another one on the board before half time. So umpire throws it up again. Lockie Dennis able to take that one out. Curtin Uni just trying to come through there, but CBC, oh, they turn it over. Brennan Gillum again, just on the goal line. And that's another behind for Curtin Uni. And look, Brennan Gillum, he's been an absolute live wire today. Look, probably the most dangerous forward on the ground so far. Well, yeah, well, he probably could have kicked four or so by now. Ward has a couple in the first quarter we spoke about earlier and two goals, but his pressure's been manic and um, been very, very good so far, Gillum. As Andrew Oli goes and kicks it long and strong. A good mark there going back with the flight of the ball. Was that player there for CBC? Just goes to kick it out. Brody Knight on the lead, but goes the shorter option in Frampton. Frampton tackled by Patterson. Patterson follows up beautifully, flicks it over the top, finds Carden Taylor. Great tackle from behind there by Chorwell. Goes to Chen. Chen just tips it up there. No one really wanted that one. Landed in the lap of that player in Daniel Hill and flicked out to the far side. And great mark there by Richard Cronin. Buries his own face as he marks it. So Cronin goes to play on. Just a long kick inside 50, up and under. Higgins underneath that one. Spoiled by that player in Harding. Flicks out the back there. Good work there by CBC. Goes back to Harding there, but picked up by the uh, Curtin Uni team. Flicks it back there and great tackle pressure. 
And what's the umpire found there? Might have found a free kick. Going to Curtin Uni Wesley. I think he has. And look, that could be could be Lockie Dennis possibly forward up there again. Yeah, it certainly is Dennis Ward. Very, very tight in the left full forward pocket. Let's see if, what he's going to do. Drop punt or is he going to run around and have a snap from here? Oh, he's got to go the run around, I would have thought. And tough kick there. But Lockie Dennis, all class as he looks to try and extend the lead for Curtin Uni with about a minute left to go in this second quarter. So Dennis goes the drop punt across the face of goal and just out to the right-hand side. Another behind on the board for Curtin Uni. And that is five goals, 7.37 now. CBC three goals, four, and it's been a dominant quarter from Curtin Uni so far. So Franklin, I think it is, just goes to bring it, and that might have been Harding, actually, and just chips it up. And CBC probably happy just to try and bring these last 30 seconds down now. Make sure they just go a bit of slow play. And there's not another score on the board, and just chips it up beautifully to the leading play there in Barton Thompson. So Thompson, once again, just goes up the line there. And that's gone out of bounds. It'll be a free kick to Aaron Callahan. Liam Anthony, the coach, will be pulling his hair out after that. 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Luckily, the old Fox Hampson's just trying to settle it down and waste a bit of time. And good kick inside 50, but spoil coming over the back there by the CBC player. And it just goes out of bounds there as we go to countdown to half time. And look, we have reached half time out here at South Oval. Curtin Uni well in control at the moment. They lead this contest five goals, 7-37. Fremantle CBC, three goals, 4-22. The goal scorers for both teams now, only one multiple goal scorer so far, and that's Brennan Gillum for Curtin Uni. Keep both of those in that second quarter. All the goal scorers in Lockie Dennis, Zach McCarry, Brock Higgins. Goals for CBC, all the same as the first quarter. Salamone, Perham and Dion Anthony, but look, a real tale of... Uh, Two quarters, I guess, so far with Curtin Uni just coming out really strong in that second quarter and look, a well-deserved lead in halftime. Yeah, they flexed their muscle, didn't they, at quarter time. Obviously, Coach Craig White got down and gave them some instructions on what he wanted to see, and they, they delivered in spades that quarter. Um, I think it was eight scoring shots to one, which was really telling. And had they kicked a little bit straighter, the game could almost be over. So CBC is still in the contest. Very, very lucky that Curtin Uni Wesley let them off a little bit. But uh, let's see what Coach Liam Anthony's got to say at half time because their effort's been really, really strong. Just couldn't, unfortunately, get enough inside 50s that court and give their forwards enough looks, could they? No, not at all. And look, what do you reckon the key message from Anthony will be um, going in at half time? Well, I think when you play a side like this, you do have to take risks with your ball movement. If you want to play safe and slow, it's probably not going to be good enough. So I think we saw early CBC, really some fast play, trying to take the ball on through the corridor. Their mids are getting involved. Pair and one-on-one looked really dangerous, but that's dried up a little bit. Um, for Jackie, he hasn't had much of a look since then. So he'll probably say, let's get back to the first quarter, what we did really strongly, get his best mix in the midfield. Uh, premiership quarters, we know, Ward. So let's see what, that, what happens next quarter. Big 25 minutes ahead after half time. Absolutely right. As we uh, look to go to a break here at South Oval, hope you're enjoying the broadcast of this round 11 fixture. Curtin, Union Wesley, Fremantle CBC. And as we go into half time, it is Curtin, Uni Wesley, leading by 16 points. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you soon.
can go. <laughs> and welcome back here to South Oval, home of Curtin Uni, Wesley. They're playing this big round 11 clash against Freeman or CBC and look, doing very well so far. Leading this contest by 16 points at half time as both teams will get back to their positions now and uh, get ready for a big second half ahead. Just checking some scores around the grounds at the moment and out at UWA Sports Park at the moment, we've got University and North Beach Footy Club. University leading this contest seven goals, 648. North Beach Footy Club, two goals, uh, sorry, three goals, 826. So a 20 point lead there for uh, University, which is probably a bit of a surprise there, Mark. Yeah, and, uh, they're a dangerous side, aren't they, University? Yeah, look, uh, funnily enough, so they've beaten CBC twice. And they've, um, they've beaten uh, North Beach already once this year as well and look to be on top there as well. So, look, a really interesting side this year is uh, University. The other game as well, Kingsway Footy Club and West Coast. And, look, Kingsway leading that one uh, through the third quarter by 10 points, 6 goals, 7.43. West Coast, 4 goals, 9.33. But look back to the uh, contest we've got here at the moment. Curtin Uni and CBC both back in positions now and look ready to go for this third quarter. And big thanks to the uh, guys from Curtin Uni just bringing us a couple of uh, beverages there to keep going for the uh, third quarter. Much appreciated, gentlemen. As the umpire throws the ball up again, knocked down by Cronin, but the umpire has found a free kick, and it's going to go to, I think, Rad Malajak. So Rado with the ball in the middle of the ground, just chips it up and finds Mason. Mason goes and switches the ball across the ground there and Blaine Wilson. So Wilson, good kick to the leading player there in corner. An absolute champagne footy there as they get the ball inside 50. And corner looks to have a shot on goal nice and early in the third quarter. Yeah, this is what we know of Kurt Newney Wesley's. Right in front of us, big buckets. He's going to line up and kick this from about 53 metres out right in front of the tent. Let's see what the big fella can do as he comes in. Just in front of the auction we've got going on here, making a lot of noise, but Big Buckets wants to make the most. He comes back in from 50, big kick. Just fading left, contest in the goal square. Higgins goes up, off hands. Rushed through by Andrioli from CBC. And they'll bring the ball back into play, Ward. Yeah, look, he just needed to start that one out to the right-hand side, didn't he, a little bit there. But So Andrioli with the ball, gutsy kick there, and well done by Miles Franklin. Had Gillum just on his hammer there, and great kick over Gillum's head. Need his aggressive ball use, Franklin, if they're going to get back in this contest. So Franklin, not his greatest kick, it'll work out all right. Goes to Andrioli, just the left footer, and ends up chicken up beautifully. Finds the player in Thomas Hooker. So Hooker just trying to go up the ground there. Good spoil over the top there by the Curtin Uni player, and the play there in Jordan Newman just sees it out of bounds. Just got a bit of word, Ward, that number 12 for Curtin Uni is actually Preston Rosario, not Bryn Osborne that we'd been calling off the team sheet. So um, that's Chief. one for us to... For the second half there was a young Preston Rosario in number 12. There we go. And he's played very well so far. The uh, second gamer, actually, for Curtin Uni. As the umpire throws the ball in again, it's kicked inside 50. A good tackle pressure there by Curtin Uni. And that player there was Matty Goss. We'll have a throw up about 25 metres out from the Curtin Uni goal. As the umpire throws it up again, Higgins just slaps it forward there but finds it. Matty Ward. Matty Ward just goes to clear it out there. Good body work there by the CBC player in Knight but wasn't able to get it. And kick inside 50. Gillum could have been a free kick. No, says the umpire. That could have been a free kick against Harding, I think it was. But the umpire says no. Gillum a bit unlucky. Yeah, he was a bit unlucky. Really good contest from Harding. May have infringed but tough character. Luke Harding wasn't going to give that one up and said, Gillum, you can have two, not three. As the umpire throws it up again, Higgins this time in the ruck against uh, Jordan Newman. But CBC just trying to bring it out there and Buick goes for the diving mark. Can't quite pick it up. Well done by Brendan Chen and Lockie Dennis both going through it. Salamone tackled. Somehow manages to get a possession away. Red hot start by both teams here now. Chen can't quite pick it up. Great tackle by Salamone. And we'll have a ball up about 55 metres out from the Curtin Uni goal. He's tough Brendan Chen, isn't he? Spends most of his time on his knees. Ward on the ground, scrapping for the ball. Really cracks in hard for the CBC side. What they'll need going into this second half is Mason goes to chip the ball out there. Goes to go inside 50. Doesn't quite work out for him. Patterson with the ball there. Ends up stacking it. Goes it to McCarry. Back to Patterson. Patterson just his left foot inside 50. And well done going back with the flight of the ball. Was the player then in Barton Thompson. Let's see what Thompson can do for CBC. Bring it out of the back half. Spreads the ball wide. Not a great kick. Straight to the Curtin Uni player there. He plays on. Puts the ball deep to the goal score. Andrew Oli should go back and mark this. 
Can't quite get their ball still in play. Gillam and Andrioli. Andrioli just steps around on his left side. Former St Kilda player. Pumps the ball out for CBC. Good contest there. Mason tackled heavily by Chen. Wilson will probably take the ball out of bounds. Right in front of the uh, coach's box for Curtin Uni. Wesley will have a boundary throw in. Four minutes into the third quarter down here at South Oval. It's been a pretty red-hot start for both sides in this third quarter so far. CBC really needed to get the first goal on the board, but haven't had any opportunities so far. Once again, going back to the middle here, we've got Chorwell and Cronin. They've been at it for most of the day now. Shallow throw in. Cronin able to take it out straight away. Tackled by Matty Ward. Somehow just pulls the ball out of that contest there. And a high tackle on him from Ratto. So just handballs it off there, finds Dion Anthony up and under kick. Not the greatest. Everyone just stand there looking at it. Lockie Dennis goes to try and grab the ball there, but not able to pick it up. Brody Knight, good pressure. But Lockie Dennis just hacks it around the body and it's going to sit there and land for Kai Mears, the debutant. No, it doesn't. And Kai Mears was absolutely cleaned up there. And that's going to be a high tackle and it's going to go back to him. Yeah, welcome back to football, son. I've got one high there. He's endeavour as good doesn't look too well, unfortunately. Um... May have caught one high as the trainers will come out and have a look at young Mears, and that would be a shame. His first game back for 640 days. I didn't quite see the contest there. Ward just looked at a lot of numbers at the at the contest, but uh, we see young Kai Mears in the hands of the trainers, and great to see him on his feet now. It's a lot of time to be out of football. You have to take a bit to get him off the ground, I would have thought, Ward. I would have thought so as well. And uh, look, Brendan Chen, just nice and... Uh Hot in the contest there, and he's a, a real bulldog for this CBC side. But Mears gets up, and he's taking his kick. Kicks inside 50. Not his greatest kick, though, and well picked off there by the play in Thompson. So just trying to work their way out of this one there. Finds a Frampton, I think it was. Just goes and kicks it up, and oh, almost cauliflower he is there. Was that player in Holman. Holman just goes and flicks it off there. Goes to Anthony, but picked off well done there by Kurt Uni. Just going to flick the ball forward there, and... Out of bounds on that far side, followed out by Sam Dennis. Look, we've gone uh, just under six minutes in this um, third quarter so far. Just the one behind on the board so far for Kurt and Uni, and they lead this contest by 17 points. So the umpire throws it in again. Well done by CBC out of the contest. Salamone just hacks it around his body. Kurt and Uni player probably infringed upon, and that'll be a free kick there. The umpire's paid vantage. And just bring it up that far side of the ground now. Just goes and chips in board. Not the best kick. Patterson trying to get it there, but going back with the ball now is Salamone. Able to just work his way through that contest. Crude set of hands. Goes back there to Thompson. Going with the ball now is Hampson. Just goes onto the left foot. Not the greatest kick. Buick spoiled by his own player, but able to get the ball back. Uh, Kurt and Uni in a funny check side kick inside 50. Thought that was going to take a uh, bit of a leg break, but it doesn't. Picked up there by the play in Hooker. Hooker just handballs it back. Finds a player who's infringed off the ball there. Might have been Hampson. Finds himself on the ground again. And we'll end up with a relayed free kick up the ground, I think. Intensity certainly lifted from both sides, but CBC's midfield looks to have lifted after half time. Obviously, some strong words from the coach, Liam Anthony. We see Pearson all in space, gives it to Dion Anthony. Dion Anthony has a bounce, runs to 50 for CBC, pumps it deep. Will it go through? Ball rolling. Curtin Uni getting back defending. Oh, and Perham, unfortunately, able to soccer it through for one behind. Looked threatening there, Ward, didn't it, with Anthony? Unfortunately, just couldn't finish on that occasion. Yeah, it was an interesting kick inside 50. It looks like the Curtin player almost wasn't worried about what was going to happen. I don't, I'm not saying he, uh, he gave up or anything like that, but almost assumed that it was going to go through and ended up just sitting there with uh, Perham just almost cleaning them up on the way through. But look, one behind each now to start this third quarter. And look, we've got about seven and a half minutes so far. As Curtin Uni looked just to bring the ball out from the far side. Higgins underneath it with Chorwell. Wasn't able to get it, but well done by Mason. Just picks it up there. Must have been someone else there as it's kicked inside 50. And Higgins, one of those players with it now, has Newman for company. And Brody Newman, not Brody Newman, sorry. Jordan Newman it is. Able to win that one there, and that is holding the ball. Looks to have gone back this quarter. Newman back to playing Higgins after starting, I think it's centre half forward for CBC. So change there from the coach. Just trying to change things around a little bit. So Jordan Newman, long kick down the line. Pack of players forms. And look, a free kick there for our bodying out. And it's gone to the CBC player. He just goes and kicks it in board there. Finds the player in Luke Pearson. So Pearson onto his right boot. Just goes and chips it up nicely. Finds Tom Wright. Tom Wright will do the same onto his left foot. Player all by himself in Johnny Frampton. And Frampton looks to have gone forward now. 
That looks yeah. to be the switch up, doesn't it? Yeah. Frampton and Newman. And why not? You've got to change things up when things aren't quite going your way and see if you can just tweak that mix and find a bit of balance. And we see big Johnny Frampton, the left footer, is going to go back. Ward from about 50 metres, I reckon. Brother of Billy at the Crows. Let's see what you can do, Johnny. And look, Johnny Frampton, he kicked some goals earlier in the year, actually. He's been pretty good for him so far. He's ended up going back the last few weeks. And here we go. Johnny Frampton goes to step through the ball. Left foot. It's a good long kick. Starting right, though. Won't quite make the distance. Spoiled over the line. Stays in, actually. Curtin Uni just trying to bring the ball out. Could have taken it out of bounds. Snapped around the body by Sanders. And that is a goal by Jeffrey Sanders from CBC. And that is the first goal on the board for the CBC side. They peg one back, but still down this contest. Five goals, nine to Curtin Uni. That's four goals, five, 29. And leads back to 10 points. Great finish from the little small forward there. Opportunist type. CBC really needed that one. They said their intensity's really lifted, you can tell, across the board. They're really cracking in hard at the moment. They sense that. Now's the time. And um, Curtin Uni Wesley have matched that so far, but um, good to see for the game's sake that they get the first one of this quarter wood. And look, shout out to Curtin Uni. We just end up with some of the uh, hottest hot chips in the world that have just come out, and they're, uh, they're absolutely sensational, actually, Mark. Yeah, I took one just before Saunders had a snap. It almost burnt my tongue when he kicked that one ward. I couldn't quite say anything. I was too busy eating a chip, but... Uh, <laughs> Thanks very much to the guys for looking after us out here. It's great. So umpire with the ball back in the middle of the ground. Once again, it's the two Ruckman in Cronin and Chorwell. Umpire throws it up. Cronin able to take that one out there. But CBC coming out of that one. Bad handball. Good turn over there. Dennis just goes and barrels one inside 50 there. Well done by the play in Rosario. Just able to knock it to advantage. But CBC just looking to bring the ball out. Up and under kick. You've got Buick. And the player there in Pearson underneath it. No one able to pick it up. McCarry, though. Good handball in board. Finds the player there in Goss. Goss inside 50. No one able to take that mark. But that could be a holding free kick against Andrioli. And I think it is. And Brennan Gillum will grab the ball about 30 metres out. And he's going to go back for his third. Yeah, it wasn't a lot in that, fortunately. It just looked to be a good contest. A bit, bit frustrated as a defender today. There's not much you can do, unfortunately. But a little bit unlucky there, the CBC defence. But... Brennan Gillum being the most dangerous forward on the ground. I never thought I'd say that driving here today. But as you said, Ward, he should go back from 25 metres directly in front and kick his third. So we've only had the one goal on the board so far this quarter. That was from CBC. Behind this contest by 10 points, Gillum looking to extend the lead again with his third. And that is his third goal of the game. First goal of the quarter for Curt Uni, and they look they extend the lead back out to 16 points. And we've got about 11 and a half minutes in this third term. Yeah, just the settler they needed there, Kurt Uni Wesley. Um, so just to balance things back up after what we've said has been a strong start from the CBC side. But yeah, Gillum going forward, getting in front as all forwards should be, as we always say. If you're in front, you're a chance to get in a free kick or that mark or that quick kick in. And he was in front and got infringed and kicks his third. So. Well done to you, Brennan Gillum. Look, we've seen a bit of that throughout the year. We uh, foolishly decided to try and pick a mid-year team um, so far, and we've seen players like Tom Hooper end up going forward. We've seen Brennan Gillum go forward. And look, uh, those kind of matchups where we've picked players in, in the team of the year in different spots, making things interesting for us going forward. But look, CBC coming to that contest there. Hampson kicks inside 50. Kick over the top there. Could roll, roll, roll. And just out to the left-hand side. A point on the board. CBC almost able to point, pinch one back so quickly there. That's Kurt and Uni bring the ball in there. Marked out on that far side by Sam Dennis. So Sammy Dennis from Kurt and Uni. Just looking to try and slow things down there. Looking for options. Kicks it out. Rado, one of those players he goes to. And taken over the line. And the umpire will ball it in. It's players like Sam Dennis, Carden Taylor. You know, Pacelli, isn't it? The real glue of this side. Not always the stars, but just really flexible utility sort of types. You can play them anywhere and they just get the job done every week, don't they? Yeah, they have that defence that, as you said, they're probably, uh, without being too disrespectful, a bit of a, a no-frills kind of... Uh, Defensive unit with Blaine Wilson, probably the, the key back down there at the moment, but they just get it done every week. As Curtin Uni go to bring the ball out, Higgins this time finds Patterson, just flicks it back ball there. Patterson, good follow-up work there. Oh, decides to take the pressure. And it's a free kick there, possibly a little bit unlucky there by Tommy Hooper, or Hooker, sorry. But Patterson will take that one. Once again goes, fakes the kick inside. 
Goes across and hits Mason. Patterson keeps going again. Fourth possession in about 12 seconds. Kicks inside 50. And that was absolute precision by Brad Patterson. And finds the leading player in corner. And he's going to go back for his uh, second set shot of the third quarter. Yeah, it's a little bit too easy there, Curtin. You just walk through the traffic. CBC midfielders couldn't defend. And as we said earlier, big buckets always leads in a straight line. Gives himself every chance. And let's watch this one right in front of the... The big marquee we've got set up out here today at South Oval. James Corner lining up. Kick his first. So Corner just leans back on it this time. He needed to start it right last time. He does this time and straight through the big sticks for James Corner. His first goal of the game so far. And we've got about 14 minutes in this third quarter. Look, Kurt Newney starting to extend that lead now out by 21 points. Yeah, danger period now for CBC. Uh, this back half of the third quarter is going to be um, really telling whether they can continue to stand up and keep that intensity and effort up or whether the Curtin Uni side are going to break the wall and uh, pile on the goals. Ward. We've often seen them pile them on late in games and things get a bit untidy after half time when this side really clicks into gear, haven't we? Look, we have indeed. And as you mentioned, 15 minutes gone now in this third quarter. And look, CBC still right in the contest, but look, that margin now creeping up to 21 points. Once again, Higgins now back in the ruck. He'll go up against Chorwell as the umpire throws it up again. Higgins able to take that one out. Picked out by CBC. Higgins goes to pick the ball up straight away, but CBC almost there. Matty Ward trying to get the ball out. But well done by Mason. Seemed to have a bit of time as he goes and kicks it inside there. Good spoil over the top. Brody Knight from CBC able to just pick that ball up. Clearing kick, but Wheeler just underneath it and uses his body well to take it. Umpire, did he call a mark? Yes, he did. Wingers are getting on top too. Curtin Uni, the likes of Wheeler and Pattinson, starting to exert their influence and always in front when the ball comes out. So Wheeler just goes to try and kick inside 50 there. Doesn't quite hit right. Hampson just uses his body to knock Mason out. Might have been leg there was Hampson. And there's a free kick there. Knight takes the advantage. CBC just wanted to get the ball moving. Good spoil over the top by the player on that far side from Curtin Uni. Well done by CBC though. Good full-up work by Saunders. Goes to flick inside, but turned over. CBC can't quite do it for him. Inside 50 again by Curtin Uni. Falcon there by Lockie Dennis, but picked up straight away by McCarry. McCarry just goes to bustle his way through, but Franklin just chasing the ball. Good work by Lockie Dennis, and the ball goes out of bounds just on that far side. So still good pressure from both sides, and both sides really still up for the challenge. Anyone's ball game, but Curtin Uni, look, they'd be the uh, $1.10 favourites at the moment as we've... Got probably about eight and a half minutes left in this third quarter. Umpire throws it again. This time knocked forward by Jordan Newman for CBC, but picked up by Kurt Newney. Snap around the body and just out to the right-hand side. But another behind on the board for Kurt Newney. They lead this game seven goals at 10 now, 52. CBC footy club, four goals, 6.30. And there's a margin of 22 points. Yep, time to take some things on here if you're CBC. You need to bring the ball back through the corridor if you can or try and take on those kicks. Not time to be safe now. It's time to roll the dice a little bit and see if they can kick a couple more goals this quarter and get back in the contest. So Franklin goes to kick in just that far side. And precision kick finds the player in Tyler Chorwell. So normally the key defender playing ruck this week for CBC goes long down the ground. Hampson, one of those underneath, it falls over. With the pressure there from Pattinson. Pattinson spits out the front there to try and get the possession, but good tackle there. And that could be holding the ball. Yes, it is holding the ball against Curtin Uni. And CBC will look to try and go another attacking move here as they go to get the ball up the ground. Just a nice chip kick there to the leading player in Brennan Chen. Yeah, got to come back inside, see if they can change the angles a little bit. Find Ward. Matty Ward. Matty Ward just chips it up and once again finds Newman. Newman looking for options straight away. Didn't necessarily want to kick it, but does now. And finds the player there in Thomas Hooker. So Hooker goes to play on. Flicks it across there to Matty, Mad Matty Ward. Matty Ward just goes across and finds Chen again. Probably eight possessions to move about 30 metres up that far side of the ground. And he's slowing it down again and goes back to Tom Smith. The thing with the Curtin Uni defence, well, they set up so well. So if you don't go fast, they're just going to set up. They'll have a plus one behind the ball and hence the slow ball movement. So you do need to take those risks if you're going to be able to spread that defence and score against them. 
An excellent kick that time by, finds a player in Holman. Holman goes across again, finds Jordan Williamson. No, I think this is Barton Thompson, actually. So Thompson, the defender, currently playing forward, goes and kicks inside 50. No one able to quite take the mark. Good pressure from behind from the player from Curtin Uni. I think that might have been Chris Leonard. And it goes out of bounds just in that far side. But look, good build-up by CBC. Weren't quite able to get inside 50, though. Uh. So the boundary throw, we'll have Higgins and Charwell going head to head. Charwell will be trying to take front spot against the veteran Higgins. Umpire pays a free kick for a high tackle there. It's going to the big fella Higgins from Curtin Uni. Charwell just infringing a little bit there in that contest and settled a little bit after quarter time. Big Brock, he was a bit fired up early, but uh, he's worked into the game very nicely. He kicks the ball high up towards McCarry. Good contest, good pair of hands. Zach McCarry, unfortunately, just dropped it late. Thought he had that one there, Ward. He looked to have a fair purchase on it. Just dropped it right at the end, McCarry. But um, another player we haven't seen a lot of today, but we know what he's capable of. Yeah, look, uh, what, another one of those players that uh, does very well with those, almost that four-prong uh, lot of tolls with uh, corner, McCarry and Cronin, as well as the uh, big man in Brock Higgins. And once again, Higgins in the ruck. This time knocked down by Chorwell there for CBC. Picked up straight away by the uh, player from... Curtin Uni and a gang tackle over the top by Matty Ward and Dion Anthony. Five minutes left to go in this third quarter. Curtin Uni with a convincing 22 point lead. As the umpire throws it up again, Higgins just palms it beautifully but picked up by Anthony. Salamone brings it out there. Ball flicks forward there. Tommy Wright just flicks it forward again. Salamone, this is his bread and butter. Decides to handball it off but turned over there unfortunately. It'll come out through the far side and Sean Buick. So Buick will just go, the slow play now just calms it down a little bit. Higgins calling for it. Going to his former South teammate there. Coming over the top there, well done by the player in Tom Smith. Ball almost taken out of the bounds, but Kai Mears underneath it. And he's taken over the boundary line by Matty Ward, and that will be another throw in once again. You'd think for CBC to give any chance in this war, they probably need two goals in the next four minutes. So um, let's see if they can do that. It's going to be a big ask, but the game needs it to happen. So they go to roll the dice. Let's see if we can do it. Kai Mears once again at the bottom of that pack. And they'll reload exactly the same as 30 seconds ago. Four minutes to go in this third quarter. Curtin Uni leading this one. Seven goals, 10-52. CBC Footy Club, four goals, 6-30. And Higgins tackled straight away by Dion Anthony. And Salamone in there lending a hand as well. Yeah, Anthony's just faded out of the game a little bit, hasn't he? Started really, really well, but hasn't been able to kept that influence going for this whole game so far. So Higgins does very well to take that one up in the ruck. A big up and under there. Miles Franklin managed to spoil it with his shoulder and the ball goes out of bounds on this far side. And I think we've moved about 12 and a half metres in the last minute and a half as the umpire goes to ball it up right in front of us. Looks like my golf game. Ward, see how far they've gone. But uh, we'll see a bounty throw in again. Higgins and Charwell to go to work. Bounty throw in favours Higgins. Taps it down. Hampson tries to shark it. Anthony gets it. Good sell the dummy. Two Ant Dallies. Anthony back to Salomon. Comes inside. CBC looking to spread. Young Wright's got it. Goes out to the outer wing to the run. CBC looking to get a little bit of overlap run happening here. Andrew Oli pushes it out wide to Smith on the out far wing. Well, that's uh, should be 50 Could metres be 50. given today's rules. You would have thought umpire, but not on that occasion. Young Smith thought he'd fox one on that at that occasion there, but he comes back inside. Curtin Uni get the numbers back on contest. Big Cronin goes through, wins the ball. Umpire said you threw that. Good pressure from behind. I think it might have been Miles Franklin for CBC. He'll have a chance to drive him forward late in the third quarter. He goes up towards full forward. Pair him, though. No. Cut across again by Wilson. He's spreading the ball out wide to the men. Kick three so far in Gillum. Brennan Gillum just holding plat. Buick running past. Umpire calls play on, try to find another 50. We see that all the time now, the stand rule, don't we? Good contest, punched away there from Lockie Dennis. Andrew Oley just pushing the ball out wide again. Hampson's going to mark on the broadcast wing for Fremantle CBC. He's calling for forwards to get moving. Good kick from Hampson. Saunders, the, the goal kicker this quarter, takes the mark. Left half forward flank, Jeffrey Saunders. Goes long to the goal square to Perham. What can Jack do? Ball comes to ground. Numbers everywhere. Frampton's got it for CBC. Over the Curtin Uni defence again. Through Wilson, Everett, Resolute. Pump the ball out again. 
Good contest. Mason goes in hard. CBC winning the ball back through Hampson. Hampson tries to step around. Takes on one. Takes on two. Mungle kick to the top of the goal square. Where's it going to land? Oh, great mark, was it? Yes, it is. Fantastic mark from the CBC forward. I think it might be right, is it, Ward? Oh, I'm not sure. It looked like it could be Bailey Holman possibly from there, or it could be Tom Wright. It's definitely a four. I think you're right, mate. It could be uh, Tom Wright. Right, right. And Tommy Wright, what a mark. Going back with the flight. Absolute What's... belter of a mark there. And, uh, look, Haley, the producer, marked that one down as a possible uh, contender for hanger of the day. And uh, we look forward to covering that one on the uh, Between the Posts show. Uh, early next week. But Tommy Wright, he'll sit there and step back and such an important kick for CBC and it goes through the big sticks. Margin back to 16 points. Don't know if we'll get the ball back to the middle of the ground. 40 seconds left to go in this third quarter. Uh, super important kick there for CBC, Mark. Really important. We said two goals would have been ideal, but they've got one. As you said, it's unlikely we'll see any more play this quarter, but back to 16 points. So, you know, within striking range, but now the story is 17 scoring shots to 11 so far. So Kurt and Uni Wesley thoroughly deserve the lead they've got. But it is still game on down here at South Oval Ward and it should be a big third, big last quarter coming up. Absolutely right. As they bring the ball back to the centre of the ground. Look, I don't think we're going to get any more play now. And we'll sit there and almost call it now. That is three-quarter time out here at South Oval. Coon University Wesley leading this contest against Fremantle CBC. Seven goals, 10-52. CBC, five goals, 6-36. In that quarter, we ended up with two goals apiece. Pretty even quarter. We'll go through the goal scores. Brennan Gillum being the best of the forwards so far today. He has kicked three. All singles, singles for the rest of them. Lockie Dennis, Zach McCarry, Buckets Corner got in the book that quarter. And Brock Higgins, the goal scorers for Curtin Uni. Singles for Fremantle CBC, Jeff Saunders, Tom Wright, Luke Salamone, Jack Perham and Dion Anthony. 16 points to the margin. What do you think, Mark, if CBC got it in them? Well, it's going to take a lot. I think they still got it in them, obviously. They've got some dangerous players who are more than capable. But I suppose if I was Coach Liam Anthony, I'd be saying, George Hampson, go and park yourself in the goal square. Everyone get outside. Let him work. And we know what George can do if you give him some supply. But he's got to get the supply award. And... I think it's time to really roll the dice if you're Liam Anthony and change something up and uh, make the Curtin Uni side a little bit uncomfortable because if you just play risk-free football, then uh, Curtin Uni going to walk away with this win. All right, well, look, let's see what Liam Anthony does with the Magnets as we go into three-quarter time. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Big fourth quarter of footy coming back from South Oval. We'll see you all soon.
we're back here at South Oval, home of Curtin Uni Wesley Footy Club. This round 11 clash between Curtin Uni Wesley and Fremantle CBC. And look, going into the fourth quarter, Curtin Uni will lead in this contest by 16 points. Quickly, before we go into this last quarter, we'll go a couple of round the ground scores and look the game between University and North Beach. University leading that one by 18, no, sorry, 22 points at the moment. And the game between Kingsway and West Coast. West Coast come back with a wet sail. And now leading that goal, a game by th four points uh, very late in that contest. So a uh, good game there between Kingsway and West Coast. But look, don't go anywhere now. As we said, last quarter of footy here out at South Oval. As the umpire throws the ball up again. A good knock forward straight away by Cronin. But Hampson started in the middle nice and early. Could have been leg there was Anthony. Umpire says no, let's play on. Ball comes out there. Good handball back but turned over Patterson. Just onto his left foot. Goes inside 50. Up and under kick. Three players come over the top to spoil that one. One of those players that's chasing it though is Gillum. Been one of the better players so far but knocked out by the player in Luke Pearson from CBC. Salamone able to just pick it up. Handball's inboard. Good set of hands there. Lands in the hands of Chor well, normally a reasonably good field kick, and no exception that time. Hits up and finds Justin Morrissey. So an important time for CBC. Let's see how they start this last quarter. Just switches it and finds Tom Wright. Hampson just running forward now. George Hampson goes and plays on from about 55 metres out. George Hampson and literally lands on the line and a mark in the last line of defence by Blaine Wilson. Yeah, a couple of early possessions for Hampson. Didn't go to full 40, went straight to the midfield. Liam Anthony said, I know better than you. I'll put him in the middle where he best can make an impact and started well. And uh, right in the uh, right in the action again there is a good kick out from Blaine Wilson. Ends up hitting the captain in Lockie Dennis. So Lockie Dennis, big up and under kick there. Lots of players will fight for it. Goes over the top there. Well done by Salamone. Able to just keep the ball in. It goes out of bounds. Sorry, that was the player in Thomas Hooker, actually. Look the same, don't they, Hooker and Salamone? Same kind of uh, very short haircut, mate. Very similar to yourself. Yep, stealing votes. Good-looking young men. Is that what you're trying to say, Ward? Absolutely right. As the umpire <laughs> goes and throws it in again. Cronin and Chorwell. Chorwell able to take position, but Patterson, been very good in the second half especially. He has. Lands to no one in particular, but goes to a hooker. Hooker just goes around the body there. Coming across the, the top, Blaine Wilson lands in the hands of Holman. Goes inside 50 there. Tracking back this time, though, there is Daniel Hill. They end up with a free kick there. So Daniel Hill just goes to play on. Finds a player on the outer side there in Matty Goss. So Goss from Curtin Uni just goes to kick it up the ground there. Leading player in corner. Just goes over the top there. Luke Harding tracks it back beautifully. Well done by Curtin Uni and Gillum. And that could be holding the ball. Is indeed. And well done by Brennan Gillum. Ends up with a free kick just in the middle of the ground. And looking for his options straight away. To be a contender for the Dartfish player of the day today, Brennan Gillum. Yeah, definitely been the most dangerous forward there so far. Goes and kicks it forward straight to three CBC players, but it's going to work out okay for Kurt and Uni. They go and kick inside 50. Higgins deep this time. Just spoils it out there, but picked up there. Good tackle from the side. What's the umpire going to say? It's going to say that is holding the ball, and great tackle by Barton Thompson. Yeah, yeah let's see what he can do with the ball movement now. Probably try and switch it maybe, bring it out this side. Said try, and try some risks now, Fremantle CBC. See if he can spread this defence and... Create some opportunities to score. It's going to be 50 metres, umpire Warwick said. So get on your bike, Barton. As we see all the forwards pushing back inside 50 for CBC. The president walks past with a water bottle. He's the hardest working president in the league, Brad Grant. <laughs> what an absolute legend he is at the CBC Football Club. Mate, great shoes as well. Just matches his jacket. Yeah, Very I'm a stylish. bit worried about uh, water actually falling on him, mate. That uh, might not work out for him. But CBC, go and kick the ball inside 50 there and... Marked going back with the ball there was Aaron Callahan. In our mid-year team of the year, Aaron Callahan. Been quiet today, but I dare say that probably means he's uh, he's kept his uh, forward to a pretty low score so far. Just on people like Brad Grant Ward. He's been a president of that club for over 20 years. It's a fantastic effort from someone to give so much time to their club. And great person around CBC. Really important people that run these footy clubs. Um, you know, tireless, tireless jobs, aren't they? A lot of things to do, but full credit to you, Brad. Uh, look, well done. I think you were mentioning off air that you know, like he was there when you played uh, back at CBC back in the day as well. So, yeah, look, uh, those kind of servants are exactly what we need in football. As uh, Kurt and Uni come to bring the ball out there, snapped around the body by Matt Goss, but turned over and finds Brennan Chan. Chips it forward there and finds Dion Anthony. He'll need to roll, and he does indeed. Chips it up. Great kick there. Finds the play in Justin Morrissey. 
So Justin Morrissey with the ball. We'll just go and chip it, go straight through the corridor. That is an absolute Barry Crocker and turned over and finds Brad Patterson. So Patterson just goes to go over the top there, finds the captain there in Lockie Dennis. Dennis chips it forward. I think it's going to land pretty well. Good spoil over the top there by Wright. Well done there by Bucket's Corner and spoiled out of bounds. And good work by the, uh, the big forward there with that defensive pressure. Good to see him putting that pressure on, isn't it? The big forwards, not always just getting them lace out, but uh, putting that heat on to see if they can affect the spall. And I saw him up on the wing before Big Buckets. I thought he might have been lost. I haven't seen him up that high before, Ward, but good to see him working really hard in the last quarter still. So 16 points the margin here for Kurt and Uni. We've got about five minutes in this last quarter. Snapped around the body there. Will Kurt and take a mark? They do indeed. McCarry going back with the flight of the ball. What's the umpire said? Has he paid the mark? No, I don't think he has. He might be coming in for a ball up, actually. Maybe not. Lucky there, Zed Mac. Yeah, he was indeed. Not either not the required distance or touched off the boot. The umpire's throwing it up and straight into another stoppage. Getting a little bit dark down here too at South Oval. Got the integrated game on afterwards. Fantastic to see. They're always warming up out there, ready for their game. In the pink jerseys as well, which is great to see. The whole club sitting there and supporting the cause as the curtain. Uniside just tried to box in CBC, but CBC working their way through and great kick through the middle of the ground finds the returning Brendan Chen. So Ten, Chen just goes to switch it out to the far side, finds Salamone going through the middle of the ground. This time is Anthony. Good walking pressure through the middle of the ground. Frampton just uses a bit of his time, looking for option, goes to kick it inside 50. Jeff Saunders is a player that tracking want there, but it's going to sit there and roll out of bounds just in front of Matty Goss and Carden Taylor. Yeah, been an impressive performance so far today. We said no Cade Stewart, no Corey Dololio, no Jared Perry. So, you know, some key players out. Um, Brent Latch as well, but good sides just cover those losses, don't they? And they haven't looked any uh, any lesser side water without those players in it today. And I've got some, uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, oh, I've just lost a word. Some trivia for you. Round two, the final score was seven goals, ten to five goals, eight. I'll tell you what, mate, blow the siren. We're pretty bloody close at the moment. Absolutely, we are. Well, two more points for CBC, and we've got a square. Wouldn't that be a um, anomaly to happen twice in one year? Very interesting stat there for sure. As uh, CBC just trying to get the ball inside 50 now. Let's see if they can kick another behind. I'm sure they'd prefer a goal, though. And Kurt Nuni just going to clear it out there. Patterson with an up-and-under kick. Well done there, but picked up by Saunders. Just snaps around the body. Frampton there, one of those players. Ball trickles over the top there, but Shelley... Chilly. Oh, that is an absolute shocker. Trying to join the ladies' day, but the ball just stays inside there. We'll go to Brody Knight. Umpire says no. You're going to have to bring that one back and kick back over the mark. Maybe Jack was just showing us where he'd rather be, Ward. Tried to kick it to the bar on that occasion. Wasn't oh. his greatest kick, but um, let's see what Brendan Chen can do. Doesn't strike me as a sort of player who's going to back himself in from here, but I'm sure he'll be getting a little bit of feedback too from the Curtin Uni Wesley locals. Had a few sherbets there this afternoon. Looked to have enjoyed their day. Mate, looks to be the place to be just quietly as uh, Brandon Chen just goes and sets it up nicely there. Almost a good mark there by one of those players in Perham as they go to clear the ball out. Lands in Franklin. That's going to be a free kick. Unfortunately, a free kick against Thomas Hooker by the looks of it. So Mears, the first game, ends up with the ball. Finds Gillum. Gillum, who's played very well up forward today, finds himself in his customary position in the back line. Chips it up. Buick just ends up with a bit of company there in Dion Anthony. No one able to get that ball back. Brody Knight, Mason in there as well. Well done by Callahan. Great tackle there by Chorwell. Umpires just let it play. Lots of up and under play and well done by that player coming off the bench in Preston Rosario. Miles Franklin didn't see him coming, but yeah, umpires definitely let it play for the most part. Yeah, good to see and good to see the way the game's been played today. Both, both sides playing with the right attitude. Really fierce intent, but all fair and above board. This afternoon down here at South Oval, as Chowell knocks it down, Wheeler collects the left footer, pumps the ball up towards half forward for Curtin Uni. Wesley, it's gone right up high. Franklin sits underneath it. Oh, great crumbing there. And here we go through Pattinson, takes a bounce. The left footer pumps the ball in deep. Higgins sets himself underneath it. Brock Higgins flies. He taps it over the corner. Didn't try to mark that, Higgins. He tapped it over the back. Big buckets couldn't grab it. Still ball, still up for contest there. Pattinson's back on it. The left footer again. Snaps it back towards the goal square. Higgins again. But Harding's been very, very good down there today for CBC, and he knocked it through for a behind. I said he's only given up one goal to James Corner. Luke Harding 
Ward, and it's a fantastic effort from what we've seen Big Buckets do most times we've done the broadcast. Mm, Harding definitely one of the strong players for uh, CBC today, and look, he's kept them right in it. Excellent kick inside there by Andrew Ollen. He's found the player in Jordan Williamson. So Williamson goes to move. Massive spoil over the boundary line by Cronin, and the umpire will come and throw it in. Ten minutes gone in the last quarter down here at South Oval. Probably time to turn the lights on, getting a little bit dim these later games, this time of the year, but magnificent conditions all day long down here. As the umpire throws it in again, once again taken out by Chorwell, but Ratto able to pick that ball up, just pumps it inside 50 there. McCarry there and just uses his body absolutely exceptionally. And Zach McCarry takes the mark, decides to move on nice and quickly. Open goal square. Higgins down there as well. Well done, Bowen, going back with the fly to the ball. And the umpire has found a free kick. And I think... That is going to go to the big man in Brock Higgins. And look, he'll step back there and for what should be a certain goal and his second of the day. And look, I'm going to say it, Mark, possibly the sealer for Curtin Uni. Yeah, absolutely, Ward. I think you're on the money. If he kicks this one, it's probably Curtin's down here. That's South Oval and the big fella should go back and kick his second. So 10 minutes gone in this last quarter. Higgins looking to put the eight through four. Kurt Nuni, and he has indeed, and that is the eighth goal for Kurt Nuni, the first of this last quarter. And they sit there and now lead this contest. Eight goals, 11 59, five goals, 6 36, and we're out to a margin now of 23 points. And as I mentioned, 14 minutes to go in this last quarter. Yep. Good, uh, good finish there from Big Brock. He's had a pretty good day. Um, him and Cronin, it's a formidable combination in the ruck, aren't they, at this mm. level? And, Two X Waffle Ruckman Cronin used to ruck for Claremont and Big Brock Higgins for East Perth and South Fremantle Premiership player and you know at this level it's a real luxury to have two ruckmen you can just wax and wane and then you got guys like Latch who aren't in the side today who can also play that similar role. Ward, so embarrassing uh, riches of tools for Coach Craig White to deploy where he needs to at any given time. Yeah, they just uh, structure up so well across the ground, don't they, Kurt and Uni? And they go to bring this one out of the contest again. Shawnee Buick just running in off the wing, able to kick that one forward there, but well done by the player in Tom Smith. Trying to pick the ball up, but follows it out of bounds, and we'll have a throw up just out on that outer side. We've got about 11 and a half minutes Almost up to 12 minutes in this last quarter. So once again, the 223s back in the ruck. Umpire throws it in there. Knocked down by Cronin this time. Well picked up by the player there in Matty Goss. Kicks forward there. Rosario can't quite take the mark. Not forward there by Tom Smith. Well done by the player there in Chen. CBC just going to bring the fall forward but turned over. And Kurt Uni with the ball just on that far side in Buick. So Buick just chips it up and finds Mason. Mason, one of the better players for Kurt Uni today. Kicks it inside 50. Spoil over the top there. One of those players was Newman. But Kurt Uni just trying to pick it up there. Quick hands back. Good tackle straight away there. That could be holding the ball. Now the umpire says no prior. And he'll come in and throw it up. Great tackle by Matty Ward. Been another good player for CBC today has Matt Ward. Yeah, he's worked hard all day. Umpire throws the ball up again. No one sits there and wants that one. It just sit there and bounces around, but Hampson decides to come and grab it. CBC, well done coming out there. And just a good kick there. And finds the player in hooker, I think it could be. Kicks it to the middle and finds Brody Knight. Knight just decides to move the ball on and finds Justin Morrissey. He's got to go this time, and he does indeed. Tries to hit Perrin. Perrin wasn't quite ready for that one, but it's worked out. Goes and kicks and finds Chorwell. Excellent kick over the top there. Well done. Finds the leading player in Jordan Williamson. Just goes and goes and kicks it inside 50. But that is absolutely exceptional by Matty Koss. Going across the contest there with a great intercept. Well done by Curtin Union as they come out of defence. Just strolling out there, finds Mason out on the far side. Shawnee Buick, he's run up and down that wing all day long. Ends up on the back of that ball. Not his greatest kick. And it goes out of bounds on that far side, just in front of Zach McCarry. So about 11 minutes left to go in this last quarter. 23 points, the margin. Curtin Uni still in control. And most importantly, 19 scoring shots to 11. Probably tells the story of the day so far. Sure does, Ward. Been very, very good again. On track to take their 11th straight win. 
as they look to make amends for last season. And McCarry in the ruck at the moment now for Curtin Uni. Just going to kick the ball inside 50. Long shot at goal. And Luke Harding, well done, just knocks it across the face. Doesn't go out of bounds. Yes, it does now. And the umpire will come in and throw it in. It'll be about 15 metres around from the Curtin Uni goal as they look to try and pile on the pressure and put another goal just to end up sealing this contest now. Yeah, Jack Perham threatened early, didn't he? Haven't seen a lot of him after quarter time today. Probably sums up the contest a little bit. But boundary throw, McCarry knocks it down. Good handball out from the Curtin Uni player there, but mopped up by Thompson. Been serviceable for CBC today in the back line, Barton Thompson. And, well, the umpire said no insufficient intent there. Bit unlucky there was a player right there. but uh, Jeez, Unless it's just travelled out on the full, or did he actually uh, say it was maybe... Uh, Deliberate, a good kick inside, 50 there. Good spall over the top by Harding. Had been absolutely exceptional today. Flicks it across and Salamone able to pick it up and flicks it out to that far side. Steps in board now, does that player. Right on there, Thomas Hooker just chips it up. Almost turned over there. Well done, it has been turned over. Well done by Rosario. Just kicks it around his body, but well done by CBC. Looking to bring it out there. Try and go through the middle now. They'll try and move quickly. Still think they're in this contest. And a great kick there and marked by the player there in Braden Thompson. So Thompson kicks it up there. Oh, great mark almost there. One of those players there from CBC absolutely got poleaxed, but good kick inside 50 by Kurt Uni. And finds the play in Lockie Dennison. Really well done by uh, Ben Preedy, putting his body on the line there. Chips inside there. Not the greatest kick. CBC will turn it over there. And I think that could have been Chorwell actually back there now. CBC just trying to work their way out and chips it off. And finds Matty Ward. So Ward just tries to go. And then they'll reload. Finds Tommy Hooker. Hooker told to go now. He steps around one player, goes to step around another, and he's going to try and go down the line. Oh, great mark almost there by Jordan Williamson. Can't quite pick it up, and he's tackled very hard by Brock Higgins straight away. And the umpire will come in and ball it up. Been a bit lively the last five minutes. Williamson, haven't seen a lot of him throughout the day, but still giving a contest late for CBC. As the game sort of peters out a little bit here, and... Higgins pushes Charwell under the ball, grabs possession, kicks it forward, and Hampson takes the mark at centre-half back for Fremantle CBC, and he's calling for players to move. As George says, get on your bike, boys. I've got to have someone to kick it to. He comes short into the middle. Good leading, presenting up down Anthony. Tried hard all day, Anthony. Really hard-working midfielder for CBC. Continues to work hard, continues to accumulate possessions. Kicks the ball up towards half-forward. Going back with a fly to the ball was Mason, but Knight keeps it in play. Right in front of us here at the broadcast. Holman handballs back. Over the top to right. Right, still foxing around. Goes on the left side inside. 50, Chen. No, and getting back. Ever reliable. Callahan for Curtin Uni. Callahan, not 15. Kicks it to Wilson. Went about four metres. The umpire blew the whistle, but Blaine Wilson has the ball on the half back line. Getting a few cheers from the tent is Wilson, the former West Coast Eagle. Kicks the ball up. Higgins presenting as always. Oh. Unlucky from Wheeler there. Just kicked his on his boot, went out of bounds on the full. And CBC Footy Club will bring the ball back in. Ward right on the broadcast wing. So seven and a half minutes left to go in this contest. Absolute shocker of a kick back inside there by CBC and Jordan Newman. And Higgins just goes back with the ball out. Able to take a relieving mark for Curtin Uni. Will take his time. The umpire says play on. So he does indeed. Kicks it long down the line. A good pack of players there. One of those is Lockie Dennis. Probably one of the shorter players in that contest. Takes a smart mark. Goes inside 50. Corner there. It's just going to sit in front of him. Well done. Below his knees. James Corner. Looking at the goal. Snaps around his body. Hasn't put it to the goal. But he's kicked it out just in front. And a good mark going with the ball. And this could be the goal for the first gamer here in Kymeers. Yeah, we said earlier today. Reliably informed, it's been 640 days. So potentially that's one ACL or two in that time, but it's a long time off in between drinks, Ward. And it's been good today, the young fellow. He's worked really hard and got himself involved and looks to have clean skills and gets a chance to cap his comeback game back with a, with a goal right at the end of the football contest here today. So Kai Mears, the debutant for Curtin Uni. Distance won't be a problem. Let's hope the accuracy isn't either. He started it out. 
right, and it stayed that way, unfortunately. But eight goals, 12 on the board now for Curtin Uni, 60. They led this contest, CBC, 5-6-36. We've got 19 minutes in this last quarter. CBC just go and clear it out there. Sits well there. Buick just handballs back there. Need to have some clean hands there. Can't quite pick it up. Is the Curtin Uni player there in Daniel Hill? And CBC just trying to bring it out, but the ball is racked up there with Dion Anthony getting tackled, and the umpire will come and grab it again. So umpire throws the ball up. Higgins in the ruck, doesn't jump up, but just takes it out of the ruck, kicks it long down the line. McCarry is the big fella down there now, but well done by the play in Jordan Newman. He's able to take a mark, and he'll look to relieve now. Might be... A little bit too late now for CBC to make a charge, but they'll keep pushing and marked in the middle of the ground. Good kick there through the middle there. Finds Thompson on the bounce, flicks across to the player in Chorwell. Going back with the ball now is Anthony. Just chips it across the ground and finds the ever-reliable Andrioli. Andrioli, not so reliable, turns it over and finds Wilson, and they'll go inside 50. Now Pye's found something here, and that's going to be a free kick and possibly a 50-metre penalty. And I think Blaine Wilson... It could be. He's going to go and have a shot on goal. Oh, I just saw him almost put the fist pump. I think Blaney's sensing the chance for the key defender to have a shot on goal. And here's your chance, Blaine, to show the coach. Can you put it over the goal umpire's hat or should you always be down in the back line? I'll back him in, Ward. I know he's a very, very good kick, Blaine Wilson. And I don't think he's going to uh, miss this opportunity to hit the scoreboard. Yeah, look, normally a very, very good field kick. Does his best work down in the back line. But Blaine Wilson, opportunity for Kurt Uni and for him to get on the scoreboard now. And look, with four, just over four minutes left to go, he strolls in. Blaine Wilson, distance will not be an issue. We're right behind this one. He started it out right. It stayed <laughs> right and hit the upright. And he's going to be absolutely filthy with himself. But another behind on the board now for Kurt Uni. They keep adding to that lead. Eight goals, 13-61. CBC, 5-6-36. And CBC go and bring the ball in now, but turned over straight away. Good tackle pressure by CBC. And the umpire will come in and throw it up now. Dartfish play of the day, Ward, with three minutes to go. Uh, obviously from Curtin Uni, Wesley, some of their better players. I think the likes of Leonard's been pretty busy. Captain Lachlan Dennis has had another impressive game. Big Brock Higgins and, and Cronin have also been very good. And then there's Gillum with three goals in his new role today. He's really caught the eye. And anyone else from your... Your no. angle that you want to throw at Ward for the beanie? Oh, no, look, I've actually liked the work of Preston Rosari. I thought he was pretty good early on. Matty Goss seems to be getting a fair bit of the footy as well today. Um, but, look, those would probably be my key players. And even Ratto was pretty good throughout the passages today as well. CBC go inside 50. Anthony ends up getting spoiled, goes off his boot, ends up getting it back. Oh, and that would have been an absolute contender for goal of the day. But just out to the left-hand side, minor score there for CBC. They're 5-7-37, still trailing Curtin Uni by 24 points. And we've got just under three minutes left in this last quarter. Lights finally on now at South Oval, getting ready for the integrated game straight after this one. And as we sit there and look at the marquee just to the right-hand side of us as well, they look like they're all set up for an absolutely big night as well. As yeah. Callahan goes down the line there, Buckets pushed out by Harding. He's been exceptional today. Patterson also being one of the better players for Kurt Uni there. Well done by the player there, number 18 in Matty Ward, being one of the better players for CBC, but turned over there. Well done by that player there. Handball's inboard, finds a player there in Preston Rosario. And Lockie Dennis with the ball now. So Dennis just chips it up to the leading play there. How will it sit? Sits very well. Buick just over the top. It's going to land in front of Chris Leonard. And just pushed through. The umpire says that is behind. Chris Leonard saying there was no pressure, son. But apparently there was enough. And Warwick Andrioli will come and bring it back in for CBC. As we tick down to the final minute and a half. Good call again today, Ward. Been a good game of... Perth Football League action. Curtin Uni Wesley just too strong, and they'll go 11 and 0 into this 2022 season. And most definitely the yardstick, and they're going to be hard to beat, aren't they? Look, they are indeed. And CBC, look, they haven't stopped trying all day and trying to go forward here, but turn the ball over again once and again in the middle of the ground. The umpire's frowned a free kick, and that's going to go to CBC. You know, that player just on that outer side. 
Looks to kick it long inside 50. A few targets there. Perham's one of them. Oh, but great mark going back with the flight of the ball there. Was I think that play in Dennis just chips it up and finds Patterson. His second half has been absolutely exceptional as well. Patterson just chips it up, finds Callahan. Callahan just chips and beautiful kick near the line. Has it stayed in? Umpire says, yes, sir, it has. And Kyle Willer marks that one there. So Kyle Wheeler with the ball, just kicks it long, straight up the guts. Almost a mark there by Chorwell, but picked up by Cronin. Cronin just chips it up nicely. A good kick inside 50, and McCarry marks and just says, let's slow it down now. 30 seconds left to go in this contest, and I think Zach McCarry will sit there and try and take every second of it up as we sit in there and get very close to full time now. Mark Winnett getting ready to roll. He's got the microphone in hand, got the dartfish beanie. I'll tell you what, out of uh, the women's game last night, I could have done with the dartfish beanie, mate. She was absolutely icy, and it's starting to get that way now as well. So Zach McCarry coming in. He'll kick right on the siren. McCarry, he has kicked an absolute Barry Crocker, and that will go almost out of bounds, and that is all she wrote out here at South Oval. Kurt Newney Wesley leading this contest now. Eight goals, 14. Sorry, winning this contest. Eight goals, 14, 62. And the visitors in CBC Fremantle. Five goals, 7, 37. Margin of 25 points. And look, a, a really strong performance once again by the Curtin Uni side. CBC, look, they actually led at quarter time. But Curtin Uni able to come out and just roll over the top in this second half. Goal scorers for both sides. The multiples for Curtin Uni Wesley. We had Brennan Gillum. He ended up kicking three. Brock Higgins kicked two. And singles for Lockie Dennis, Zach McCarry, and James Corner. And once again, we've got Mark Winnett. He's actually got the uh, player of the game there. And we'll flick across to uh, him Brennan. now. Down here with the uh, Darfish player of the day today. Three snags, mate. Well done. Yeah, yeah thanks, mate. It's uh, yeah, the boys have been building pretty nicely over the you know course of the season, and yeah, today we sort of put it together at times. Um, still a bit of work to do, but yeah, it was a good win. So uh, went forward today, kicked three goals. I've only ever seen you play back, mate. How many times have you been forward? Yeah, uh, a little bit of a new role. Craig's um, thrown me forward the oh, last probably three or four weeks. And, um, yeah, you know, like something different, like uh, getting at the big feet, big buckets and Z-Mac and that bring it to ground a fair bit. So, yeah, no, it's nice. It's good well, job. Coach is right next to us, mate. So just let him know where do you want to play for the rest of the season. Is it back or forward for uh, you, Gilly? Uh, wherever he puts me, he's, um, he's my big cousin. So I'll, I'll stay in his good book so I can um, make sure I see him at Christmas still. Uh, well done. 11-0, and zero, mate. Well done and great game. Look, and uh, well done to uh, Brendan Gillum winning the Dartfish Player of the Day out here at South Over. Once again, it's Kurt Nuni, as Mark mentioned, 11 and zip now. The real yardstick in this competition, and they stay top of the ladder now. CBC, look, definitely learn a lot from this contest once again right in it, and they'll um, sit there and uh, try and regroup and get ready for the last point, uh, point of the pointy part of the year and still trying to keep ready, getting ready for finals there. But, look, definitely weren't disgraced. Curtin Uni coming out on top again. Hope you've enjoyed the broadcast out here at South Oval. It's starting to get a bit dark and starting to get a bit cold, so we'll look at wrapping up soon. But thank you again to the team behind us, Haley and the uh, two guys on the cameras. We really appreciate your support. Thanks again to Mark. Really good call alongside me today, and thank you so much for your work. Enjoy your weekend, folks. Enjoy the other footy that you sit there and watch. Drive safe, and look, we'll see you back at the footy next week.